Hi, my name is Alyssa, and for as long as I can remember, I have never been satisfied with the way I looked. So what did I do as a young girl who wasn't confident in her body? I started dieting at the age of 11. Now, was this diet recommended by my doctor? Did I check in with a certified dietitian on a monthly basis? Nope. Wow, not a great plan. I know it sounds like a good idea, but generally doctors know nothing about proper nutrition because it's not a part of their training, and dietitians tend to be all over the place with the quality of their advice, particularly as- I'm sorry, is this guy a dietitian or a nutritionist? Okay, so something I want us to pay attention to, because this is where my work would come in, right? Why is this person making a video about this person's video? We make videos about people all the time, usually to have a conversation about something more. So do you think he's going to make a video to have a bigger conversation? Or is he making a video to talk about this person? Let's see. Field. So in my opinion, if you aren't navigating through major health issues and are just trying to lose weight, you're better off just doing your own research than to risk being paired with an activist dietitian who can burn years of your time leading you down the wrong path. That being said, outside of the typical morbidly obese fat acceptance advocate who definitely needs to reevaluate their food choices, there are a lot of people who have less extreme weight issues but are still having trouble getting to their ideal weight that are being harmed by fat acceptance type thinking. They okay, so now we're looking at a bubble that is criticizing, no, that is saying who needs people who've studied this when you can do the research on your own? Okay, so he's... Hmm. Yippee says, I feel like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I feel sick. I'm going to hate this, bro. I already feel annoyed. So basically he's like, al he's into alternative medicine. Okay. He's like an alternative medicine person, but like probably a more conservative person. This person already sounds neurodivergent. Oh, this is autism on autism crime already. I can tell. The animation storytime YouTuber, Alyssa, and her channel, Illumation, so cute, is a perfect example of what fat activists have turned the body positivity movement into. Body positivity was initially about accepting flaws or imperfections that we can't change, but now it's being used to justify- Um, wrong? No. The fat acceptance movement started off encouraging people not to mock fat people for going to the gym, from my understanding of it. It wasn't about accepting flaws. It was about creating a movement that said fat people are allowed to go to the gym because they were being mocked for going to the gym, which was counterintuitive, you would think. I don't think it was about accepting flaws. I could be wrong, but I swear the history of it was about going to the gym and being bullied. Because I remember doing a whole video essay on it, which is now privated, but I th thought that's what I learned. By addiction, and it's helping people make excuses to not change things that are completely in their control. In this video, Perks of Being the Fat Kid, Alyssa talks about her personal struggles with weight and dieting. Oh, body acceptance, not fat acceptance. Wait, is he mixing up two bubbles? Because I thought this was about fat acceptance. Nope, see, now we're mixing up bubbles. Hold on. Turn the body positivity movement into. Body positivity movement, but then it's titled fat acceptance. These are two, di these are different bubbles. These are all different bubbles. See, now I'm getting confused. Body positivity was initially about accepting- Okay, body positivity was initially about that. He's right. I'm getting confused. Why are we watching a cartoon about fat acceptance then? In flaws or imperfections- Which is different. It's a different movement than body- po Body positive. sorry. Body positivity bubble is different than fat acceptance bubble. Those are two different groups. That we can't change. But now it's being used to justify addiction and it's helping people make excuses to not change things that are completely- You know, I think religion has also been- used as a reason and explanation and justification for lots of rape and f and pillaging and misuse and tr mistreatment of people. Sh so, I mean, humans. Okay. In their control. In this video. Yep, he says, what's the difference? Wouldn't a body accepting person accept a fat body? But there are four different reasons. The body positivity movement was about accepting flaws in the form and not judging people for their journey. The fat accepting movement was about not mistreating people who were trying to better themselves, like by going to the gym. So that's different. Fat acceptance, body positivity, health at every size, all the same to them. Yeah, those are all different. So the the why is the difference? It's the saying are Orthodox and Catholics and um, Lutherans the same. They all follow Jesus. And it's like, no. Just because you're a follower of Christ doesn't mean you're the same kind of follower of Christ. Like that's, I think that's, I'm getting a little too nitpicky about the categorization, but you guys know that's my obsession. So again, okay, look at this little, look at this little thing I made. Oops.
wrong thingy. Hold on. Hold on. So we're all talking about a shade of blue. The question is, which shade of blue are we talking about? So right now, he's mentioned two to three shades of blue. And I'm not sure which one this video is actually about. Perks of being the fat kid. Alyssa talks about her personal struggles with weight. and uh, Discord says the fat acceptance movement took over the body positivity movement. Not in my bubble. They're very different still. But maybe. Dieting. But from a body positivity slash fat acceptance point of view... While it is easy to sympathize and care about her struggles because the first five minutes of the video are about bullying. And based on how I was treated as a kid for being fat, that three letter word brings back so many bad memories. So while it is easy to sympathize with her being treated poorly as a teenager, unfortunately, this video is full of tabloid style research and bad information that will lead people into an ideology that will cause them to be okay with being obese. For example, this moment here. According to the National Library of Medicine, about one half of teenage girls and one fourth of teenage boys have tried dieting to change the shape of their body. And of those girls, more than one out of three were actually at a healthy weight to begin with. And these numbers are wild to me. So my first question is, what's wrong with teens trying to lose weight? One in five people between the ages of two and 19 in America are obese, which means they should be concerned about their health. The second part of this statement says that 33% of teen girls who tried a diet were already at a healthy weight. What does a healthy weight mean? By some standards, I could be 40 pounds heavier than what people would describe as thin and still be at a healthy weight. These girls might have wanted to diet because they weren't thin, and wanting to be thin does not mean you desire to be underweight like the tone of this was suggesting. So I looked up where Alyssa got the quote to which she did not properly cite, so maybe this is the correct source? The first problem I see is that this is a sociological study from 20 years ago. Way too old. Studies like randomized surveys are out of date after five years. Well, the dilemma is that a lot of us who grew up, I don't know how old, does anybody know how old she is? Because that would change how we grew up with the information, right? So like that information sounds accurate for the way I was. So 20, 2004 was when I was in high school. So yeah, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like that, when she said that statistic, I was like, yeah, that was my childhood. That was my upbringing. So is she referencing something from her childhood or is she referencing something from now? I could understand the discrepancy there, but I would say that millennials and um, young millennials are old, older and young millennials are probably still operating off of the 2004 statistic than the new one, right? So in some capacity. It's because culture can change quickly. The second issue is that this page cites uh, Freya says, think before you sleep as a formal education in fitness and was in the industry for 10 years. That's why he makes videos about health. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No sources, which means I don't know any of the specific definitions of the information here. So effectively, this is an opinion piece, not scientific data. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was an opinion piece, right? Didn't it come off like an opinion piece? You know what I mean? Like, didn't, did we think she was like a scientific person or did we think it was an opinion piece? Obviously, I thought it was an opinion piece. In fact, this page is so old that half the links are broken. Mm. Seriously, fire the person who did this research. Then in this section here, the article tries to conflate trying to lose weight with symptoms of anorexia. If you're tired, depressed, cold, and dizzy, then you're probably cutting way too many calories. Or you're addicted to sugar like most people, and you're experiencing withdrawal from skipping dessert and not drinking like three liters of soda mm -hmm. and orange juice every day. It will take around 10 days for that to go away. Deal with the sugar withdrawal. Don't cut more than 500 calories below your maintenance per day. Learn how to cook and portion meals properly. I will say fatness is so subjective to culture um, and how people observe the body. Like growing up in a Middle Eastern bubble, like you're fat if you even look soft. If you even look soft, even if you're not, like you fat. That's the word they would use to describe you. So I think that's interesting. Cognitive says she was adding facts to support her position so it wasn't purely opinion. Um, you know, when I watch pieces of people on the internet, myself included, when I reference things from things I've read, obviously I'm saying as a layman, as a normal person, I could be getting it wrong, right? So I, I think we need to be open to that. I don't know how you guys watch content, but I never watch content and assume it's not someone's opinion, even when they cite statistics or facts, because the facts are subjective to how you're reading the data, right? So in my personal opinion, like when I observe any, even when I observe the news, like it's so biased. How do you guys not read it and think like, yeah, they're probably reading that article or study with their own lens. So I never, ever, ever, ever watch anything without a, 
acknowledging that it's probably just a person's opinion. I don't know if you guys are reading things, even when they're experts, you know, experts just have opinions. Even Huberman, going back to Andrew Huberman, he has to put a disclaimer on his podcast that nothing he says on his podcast relates to anything he does with work. Because even Dr. K has to say he's not doing therapy, even though people think it's therapy on his YouTube channel. I just take it as their opinions, but they're speaking from a place of study as well. But there's, they could be wrong, right? So like, I'm not certainly not going to look at an animation YouTuber and think like, oh, she's using statistics to push her point. It's like, well, she's just doing what humans do. We all do this. You know what I mean? So I'm just not taking her as seriously, maybe as some other people might. And you'll be fine. Let's get back to Alyssa's video. Teenagers should be focused on getting good grades, hanging out with their friends, and seeing the Timothy Chalamet Willy Wonka movie. Not counting calories. I disagree. If they're obese, then they should be counting calories, learning how to eat healthier, and not buying movie snacks. It's also kind of disingenuous framing to show animations of teens who are a thin, attractive weight, and use that to suggest that kids who- Why did he say that? Thin, attractive weight. Why did he associate thin with attractive? Who do have weight problems like obesity, should be focusing on yet another low-risk, unoriginal Hollywood movie about a candy company. Eh, this is so biased and boring already. Who cares? I didn't I didn't like any of the Wonka remakes. Original is always the best. But you know what I mean? Like, he's so boring. Like, he's so... I don't like content creators like this. I'm so bored already. Oh, my God. There's 36 minutes to this video. Jesus, fuck. We are absolutely speeding this guy up. Like, who cares? But listen to this. Like, the way he speaks, you know what bubble he's in. Can anyone tell me what bubble he's in? Listen. Who movie snacks. It's Because, like, normal people don't talk like this. Like, people who don't have agendas, like, he's worried about ideology. Bro, I can literally tell what bubble you're in. Kind of disingenuous framing to show animations of teens who are a thin, attractive weight and use that to suggest that kids who do have weight problems like obesity should be focusing on yet another low-risk, unoriginal Hollywood movie about a candy company instead of trying to fix their health issues. Though it's kind of ironic that a video about fat acceptance almost exclusively features thin people. Why did you choose to do that? Are you trying to erase fat people from existence? Put an anime parody of Choji here instead of Sasuke, or you're a bigot. But at this point, it becomes very apparent that Alyssa doesn't really know much about health or fitness and is not really qualified to give advice on this topic. Why are kids so body conscious? Why are they getting bullied? Who is teaching them this? Well, we all are, whether we realize it or not. It's called diet culture. We're all collectively responsible? First of all, you say that while showing a picture of a Frappuccino, which is a fake coffee drink that was essentially created by Starbucks. Oh my god, he's so autistic. Holy fuck, he's so autistic, bro. I love him. I love the autists. This is amazing. She's just she's just sharing her opinions on how her bubble operated, and he's lecturing us about a frappuccino. Girl. For all the people who don't know this because they can't cook, a vanilla frapp at Starbucks literally has all the same ingredients as vanilla ice cream. Yeah, there's no coffee in this at all. It's just like so sweet. You hardly even taste the caramel. So these are both really milkshakes, if anything. They don't taste bad, but I mean like coffee, no. This has over 50 grams of sugar in it. To be clear, that's 50 grams of added sugar, which translates to 200 calories of processed sugar that was added to the drink. There's nothing healthy about that. And I'm so glad that I'm not the only one who noticed that a Frappuccino is essentially a dessert and not coffee. Oh my God, I'm so exhausted. This is the most exhausting human I've ever listened to in my life. Freya says he used to be in the MGTOW bubble, but then he got with Brittany Venti and he moved into the commentary fitness stuff. Ooh, Jesus Christ. Is I hope this girl doesn't give a fuck about this boy. Man, tell these girls to DM me. Nobody should care about Brittany Venti or her bubble. No offense to Brittany Venti. Okay, she doesn't, she's not, don't. Shh. I can get along with everybody, but also, shh. You know what I mean? Like, don't base your life off this guy. Tell that Illy, what's her name? Illy, whatever, whatever is her name? Tell Illy... Illimation, not Lilymation, Illimation. Tell her not to care about this boy. Not important. Not important. Very unimportant. Because it drives me insane to see people say that they're trying to lose weight, followed by them starting their morning off by drinking a 380 calorie scoop of ice cream. I used to work. Yeah, I don't recommend getting Starbucks drinks if you're trying to maintain some sort of discipline in relation to your weight. My husband got me potato chips. I'm eating a hum, 100 calories of them a day as my treat. Because if he, if I don't have any control, I will eat the whole bag, and it's very caloric. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in a lot of calories. Caloric is that the right word? It doesn't matter. The point is, this is autistic autistic crime. Because Illy, what's her name? Illy is also autistic, right? So he's autistic. She's autistic. Autistic on autistic crime. The neurodivergence, I hate, I hate when people do this to me in my videos. They're so autistic. They'll tear apart every sentence I say, but then I'm so neurodivergent that I will also tear apart everything you say in a video. This is, this is bubble on bubble crime. 
at Starbucks. These are made with 5% coffee. She also wrote gluten-free on this animation. I hate to break it to you, but most of the Starbucks fraps are gluten-free. Gluten-free does not mean it will put you in a calorie deficit. Ice cream is gluten-free. Coca-Cola is gluten-free. Lay's potato chips are gluten-free. This is like claiming Oreos are healthy because they're vegan. Are people I mean, I, I get what he's trying to say. You know, like he's trying to have like a bigger conversation around the topic. I just wish he wasn't making it about her and he was making it about the subject matter, but that's fine. Well, this easy to trick. If you want to know what's healthy, then you actually need to read the ingredients list, not the marketing information on the front of the package. According to self.com, diet culture is an entire belief system that associates food with morality and thinness with goodness. And it's rooted in the very colonial belief that every individual has full control and responsibility over their health. No, no. Shout out to, is it BB Rexa? BB Rex, she has PCOS and she was talking about the weight gain and how people are judging her pretty hard for it, but like she has no control over it. And I think that's such an interesting journey to go through. Um, that stuff is fascinating to me. Like what people think is happening with your body. And it's true. They judge. I judge. Sometimes it happens like instinctually where I'll look at someone and I'll be like, ew. And then I'm like, man, I don't even know their story, bro. There could be lots of reasons, bro. But yeah. I actually grew up pretty fat phobic in the bubble that I was in. And it took me a long time not to judge people specifically because they were fat. It it, it took me like years. I started to break my fat phobia streak like uh, 12, 14, 15 years ago. But I will say sometimes I catch myself. I'm like, man, that's pretty fat phobic of me, bro. Sometimes you just got to catch yourself. You got to be like, man, what do I care if they're fat, bro? Why does it bother me? And it like genuinely only because I start to put a narrative together of what it means with them being fat. And it's usually not because they're fat that I'm annoyed. It's usually because of something else. But then the easiest thing to point at is the fat. You know, Yippie says fat phobia, Arab culture is rampant. Bro, fat phobia and Arab culture, so rampant. I call myself fat right now. I know I'm not fat. But Arab status wise, there's a fatness. I got to catch myself. I got to catch myself. You know what I mean? Anyways, the point is, is that it says something about you. But again, it takes introspection to wonder, like, why am I upset that they're fat? Same way as like, why are you upset that people like dye their hair or get piercings? Why are you upset that people are trans? Like, we don't ask ourselves why. We just think we know why, you know? Oh, no, that is woke propaganda. Oh, God, please someone tell this girl that quoting a magazine article is not research. Stop acting like it is. That's like... He's so angry for no reason. Aut you know, he's autistic. But like, yeah, quoting a magazine isn't really research, but that's what laymen do. She's not a scientist. Is she, is she a scientist? She's just being a person. Guys, I'm just a person. It's so frustrating when people are like, um, Brittany, are you like a therapist? No, dude, I'm just a person. We're just YouTubers. We're just all figuring it out. Do we all have to be scientists to kind of read a magazine and reference it? People get stuff wrong all the time. He's getting stuff wrong right now in this video. Who cares? Saying, according to my friend Rachel, dieting is bad. By the way, I'm saying like, who cares in this context for this video? I don't black and white all my rules for all situations, but in this context, it's like, she barely even said anything yet. I know this metaphor sounds stupid, but if you actually read some of the references that woke people cite, like Robin D'Angelo's White Fragility, they are full of, according to a friend of mine, style arguments. That's not science. That's just someone's opinion. Also, what's with yeah, these? Yeah, most things you read are just going to be people anecdotal lived experience. And also, like, science changed. Things change. Information changes. Diet culture is real. It's a bubble. Like, it's a bubble thing. Yeah. In my bubble growing up, thin was associated with good and fat was associated with bad. And even more than that, studies have shown that people who are pretty are perceived as good and people that are, quote, ugly are perceived as bad. Yeah, it's just how humans are. Humans categorize things. These animations. Is she really trying to use this to suggest that ice cream should be considered just as healthy as an apple? Personally, I think sugary fruits like apples, bananas, and berries are way overrated in how healthy people think they are because they are great at causing acid reflux. But certainly, an apple is better for you than a cup of sugar and cream on a processed white flour cone, especially sure. if you're talking about weight loss. Now She's not saying that, though. See how he's misunderstanding her and he doesn't get it? She's not saying an apple is as healthy as ice cream. She's saying people will judge you for eating an ice cream instead of eating an apple. They will literally judge you. They'll literally look at you and be like, I can't believe you're eating that when you should be eating an apple. And I'm saying it's none of your business what people put in their mouth from apples to dicks. Okay, that's all that she's saying. She isn't saying eating ice cream is as healthy as an apple. And I would know because I grew up in a household that absolutely was like, you're eating that again. You're eating hot Cheetos. Oh my God, are you eating hot Cheetos again? It didn't matter that I was thin. The fact that I was eating hot Cheetos is what they were, 
It's my body. I'm a grown up. I'm in my 30s. I can eat what I want. But people will decide, oh, like, it's none of your business if people are unhealthy, bro. Now, Alyssa, yet again, did not cite her source properly for the definition of diet culture, but I was able to find it anyway. Diet culture isn't just about smoothies and food tracking apps, and it doesn't only harm people who diet. It's written by Christine Byrne, and it says, even the young teenagers I work with in my nutrition practice use the term diet culture. They talk about how their parents don't keep certain foods in the house, their friend is trying to lose weight, or their coach told them to avoid sugar because, you know, diet culture. Please, Christine, tell me how keeping junk food out of the house and avoiding processed sugar is problematic, or maybe give... You know, sometimes people try so hard to be healthy, they become unhealthy. One thing I've learned from gym culture and being in that bubble is how toxic people end up becoming because they think if I'm at the gym, at least I'm healthy. You know, going to the gym can be very unhealthy for you. Keeping no sugar in the house, keeping no fun, no food, nothing that's even slightly just a little bit of a fun, like chocolate in the house can be a sign of super, super toxicity. Control, punishment. It could, it's like a form of an eating disorder possibly. Now, I don't think counting calories is an eating disorder. I count my calories, not all of them. I'm pretty sloppy with it. But I try to keep in a certain threshold of calories, right? Because I'm in a deficit right now. And there's this idea that like, oh, counting calories is always an eating disorder. Obviously, that's not true. Oh my gosh, keeping healthy food in the house, always a punishment. Not always true. But I do, when I go shopping, kind of judge families that only eat frozen food. I do. Part of my brain is like, this cannot be healthy for you. And it's not. But also, I'm not really judging them. I'm judging the fact that we live in a society that doesn't even offer people healthy options. But also, I live in Europe where my favorite snack is banned. It's illegal because it's cancerous, and I'm upset at Europe. How dare they tell me what to put in my body? I'm just as bad as those families that only serve their kids frozen food. But also, no one's bad at all because we're all going to die on this fucking floating rock, and we have the right to eat some goddamn frozen food. But also... Yeah, it is kind of hard. In some ways, I wonder, should America be like Europe? Should we ban all of these snacks and fast food products so we can be healthier? But also, you know what I mean? Q says, I'm not sure frozen food is unhealthy. Um, Think about it like this. It's not that the frozen food might be unhealthy, but you are losing out on a lot of the nutritional benefits once you freeze and repackage food. Or you're getting like, I we got McDonald's. As like a cheat day, I like European McDonald's. I don't eat American McDonald's, but I was getting a McDonald's for like my cheat day. And bro, just like the smallest amount of food was so many fucking calories. And I'm like, whoa, no wonder like people who eat fast food get fucking fat because you're the, the amount of food they give you. There's no way that feels satisfactory. That's why I eat a lot of potatoes. I eat a lot of potatoes because I can eat so many potatoes without hitting my calorie um, count. So I get so much more food in the day. I eat so much salad. Oh my God. I make my favorite, like my favorite salad. I eat so much salad and it's what I want to eat, but I can eat so much of it and not even hit my calorie. Like, so I understand why people get fat eating fast food because like you're not satisfied eating a little fucking burger, bro. You want like five of them, but now you're eating 3000 calories, you know? So everyone's going to have a different relationship. I have a friend that doesn't have a scale at their home. Because if they keep a scale in the home, it will contribute to their eating disorder. I keep a scale in the house because it doesn't contribute to any bad negative feelings. I've never had an eating disorder though. I've never felt that way about my body because I have a very stubborn personality. So like I will do whatever I want, whether it's good for me or not, as long as I'm enjoying my life. You know, Phoebe says, yes, Brit, you binge out of the guilt because you demonize foods. I didn't realize I swung the pendulum. It swings back. Absolutely. Right. Uh, o says the thing is, I think this video would be much more productive if he has a lot less emotional on how he's presenting the criticism. If approached more factually, he would be able to be heard more. Yeah, he's a little too emotional for me, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite salad, P.S., I do share the recipe in my latest behind the scenes videos for YouTube members. So if you guys want to see what salad I eat almost every day, it's a red cabbage salad my dad made for me my whole life growing up. And it's so good. And it's maybe not your taste, but man, I fucking love it, bro. You know what I mean? 
So again, like I'm not an expert. I'm just coming. I'm just a person trying to figure out her life. I'm not an expert. See how he's mad at this girl for trying to be an expert. I'm not trying to be an expert. I don't think she's trying to be one. I think we're just trying to figure out our lives. You know what's ironic? Can I tell you what's so ironic about this whole video and how people don't think about what they're saying? At the beginning of this video, he said she should not go to a nutritionist or somebody who would shove an ideology down her throat. She should do the research on her own. When she did the research on her own, he punished her because he didn't like her sources. That's why we go to professionals, so they can get the right sources. But his own advice to this girl was that she should do the research on her own. But then you see what happens when you do the research on your own? You might look at the wrong research because you're not a professional. This guy can't make up his mind. Does he think she's capable of doing the research on her own, but then she, he mocks her for it? Or should she go to a professional, which he would also mock her for because he would claim that professional has an ideology. People don't know what they want. They don't know how to give you help. They don't know how not to contradict themselves. He's so beautiful. What a human. What a, humans are going to human. How dare he start off this video telling her to do her own research and then drag her for doing her own research. Give some advice on how to eat healthy? Nope. She just says you're a racist if you think being thin is good. Oh no, not again. The line that Alyssa quoted from this article. Link it's because some bodies don't work out that way. The reason they say it's anti-blackness or anti-people of color is because some people on the planet evolve differently and their bodies naturally sit at a different weight. Not all black people are the same. Black people aren't a monolith. Okay, so just FYI, when they say anti-blackness, they're not even talking about all black people. They're just talking about certain kinds. It's like at my church, actually, even though I grew up in a really fat phobic home, there was a Samoan family at our church and my parents never talked about their weight. They only said like, that's different. They're born that way. God made them bigger. Isn't that interesting? Like certain people do have a proclivity to be bigger. And my parents knew the difference, at least that like, oh, that's different. God made them bigger. And I do think that's like kind of, but they don't do that with blackness. They don't know how to translate that to blackness. Not all black people, though. That's the problem, too. Not all black people are genetically predispositioned to those kinds of, like, genetic, like, body types. So that's also the difference here. There's a lot more nuance to go into. Thanks to another article from Self.com that is just a personal anecdote of a colleague of hers who goes by Aubrey Gordon. Then in Aubrey's article, she cites what looks like yet another opinion piece as proof of her arguments. Do any of these people use actual science to form their beliefs? Looking at Alyssa's second animation, things get worse. Not only does she start off by saying that we're all collectively responsible for dishonest marketing from fast food companies, but now- I mean, I think societies are responsible for societies, so no one's responsible for anything unless you want to be. Like, lots of people have that opinion. Religious people think we're all obligated as a society to be responsible for people and children. That's why they're afraid of trans people. She's afraid of diet culture. I'm afraid of your mom. Now she draws a picture of an overweight person and captioned it, also runs marathons often. Uh, how? Marathons burn a ton Tr Oh my god. Of calories. How much are you eating per day to be a marathon runner and still be overweight? Car Do you know what broke my fat phobia? I have a story. I had a story. I popped a bubble. In my early 20s, I was friends with a girl and she was fat. And she ran marathons. And that completely popped my fat phobia bubble where I was like, oh, fat people can run marathons. Oh, fat people run marathons. And to this day, she still runs marathons. And she's still fat. Yeah, it's true. Isn't that interesting? That's what popped my fat phobia bubble. I was like, oh, fat people can run. Never mind. My bad. I used to literally think they're, they can't do things. Now, not all fat people. Fatness in general can be very hard on the body, hard on the knees. It definitely can be a deterrent. She's much thinner than she is. Uh, she's not like 600 pounds, of course. She's functional. She can walk. But she's what you consider fat. But she blows my mind. She's amazing. She's smart. She's got multiple degrees. She's very amazing. But yeah, fat people do run marathons. And it popped my bubble. You know? So again, I think, yes, at a certain type of fatness, it's like, whoa, what are we doing here? But also, I think Eugenia Cooney is allowed to exist. I think she's allowed to be on the internet. I think it's wrong to want Eugenia Cooney off the internet. I think it's wrong to want fat people off the internet. I think it's wrong to care what Eugenia is doing with her body. I think it's wrong to care what fat people are doing with their bodies. But I think it's okay to be concerned. But I also think it's inappropriate and sometimes not your concern. 
cardio burns the most calories out of any exercise. Take it from this video here where they did a calorie burning challenge to see who could lose weight the fastest. Listen to how many calories this guy burned doing cardio. My approach, I'm gonna be playing basketball. I'm gonna get some shots up, do some training, maybe play some one-on-one. -on -one. So it's been 60 minutes so far and you've burned an astounding 595 calories. This is so bad. Note that one hour is about one fourth the marathon finish time of an average runner. And keep in mind that you have to train for marathons too. So the idea that this person does athlete levels of exercise and still has weight problems is ridiculous. Or she eats like 5,000 calories a day. Oh wait, there actually are obese marathon runners. Three marathoners who are breaking stereotypes about what runners look like. We got Latoya Shante Snell. Let's check her finish time and it's nine hours. That's not marathon running, that's marathon walking. I have very little conditioning when it comes to running and I- Oh my God, this is what- Okay, so this, see how he's shaming the fat person for trying? because it's not good enough to him. This is what fat acceptance was. Fat acceptance was created for people like her because people like him said, see, even when you try, I'm going to shame you. And then fat people didn't want to try anymore. God, he's every stereotype of a bubble that drives me crazy. Why are you punishing this woman for trying? Who cares if it took her nine hours? I don't care if it took her 12 days. The woman is running. The woman is trying. Man, haters gonna hate, bro. Haters gonna hate. This is what fat acceptance to me started off as. This woman tried. She ran a marathon. I can't even run, period. This woman is fat and I am thinner and she does more in her day than I do in mine. Girl, you wanna know how many steps I've taken today? This is based off my phone. So, you know, do that with what you, do that and do what you will with that. I have taken 324 steps today and it is 11.23 p.m. You're supposed to have five to 6,000 steps a day. So fellow YouTubers, let's be honest, we don't walk. I don't walk. So this woman, she's amazing. And see how he's shaming her? What an asshole, dude. What? He's such a fucking asshole. I'm certain I can walk a marathon faster than nine hours and 20 minutes. How so? But do you? When was the last time you did a marathon? Because she do a marathon. I don't do marathons. So as a thinner person, I'm going to say she's amazing. She's amazing. How about the others? Reagan Chastain, 10 hours. Martinez Evans, 7 hours. Not great finish times, but again... Who cares about the finish time? Jesus Christ! Does this matter? I do not care. The fact that you did it is what's amazing. These people would have to be eating massive amounts of food to maintain... Yeah, this girl, that's, fu that's a very uniquely large woman. That is a fat woman. And she's probably not very fucking healthy. I don't care. It's not my business. If she wants to die early, great. People skydive every day, they die early. People get into cars, they die early. People smoke, they die early. If you want to smoke, smoke. If you want to be fat, be fat. If you want to be Eugenia Cooney, be Eugenia Cooney. Just ask yourself why. Ask yourself why. Why are you obese? Why are you smoking every day? Why are you starving yourself? And if you're okay with the answer, it's none of my fucking business. And even if you weren't okay with the answer, it's still, say it with me, none of my fucking business. None of my business. It's none of my fucking business. Now, if you're going to get butthurt over my opinion about people who do these types of lifestyles, that's also not my business. It's also not my business. If you're mad at me because I think maybe don't starve yourself, also not my business what you think of me. But also, I also don't care if you starve yourself because I think you have the right to live and die how you want. 10 hours. You're allowed to believe in an invisible God. You're allowed to be fat. That's kind of my rule. Martinez Evans, seven hours. Not great finish times, but again, these people would have to be eating massive amounts of food to maintain their weight with that much exercise. Anyway, now that all the generic fat acceptance stuff is over, let's focus on a list. You know what? Listening to him talk makes me want to binge. It's, I think it's my minor divergency. When people tell me like, you can't do whatever you want. I'm like, you're, we're all going to die. I can do whatever I want. Husband, give me my cookies. Now I want my cookies. I want to go eat a box of cookies. He makes me want to eat past my calories. I'm not supposed to eat anymore except for salad today. But now I want my cookies. Because he's he's like, you can't do this. I can do what I want. You're not my mom. See, he does. He triggers that neurodivergent. Like some people call it like maybe I have autism and it's PDA. Bro, I literally want to eat my cookies right now. Don't tell me what to do. Don't... Ooh, don't tell me what to do. Uh, bro, mm, don't tell me what to do, bro. Ooh, now I want my cookies. Damn it. You already had your calories. Girl, you already had your chips today. 
You're not going to eat your cookies because we're disciplined. We're disciplined. Ooh, don't we want these arms to be bigger? Yes, we do. We want bigger mommy arms. We're not going to eat the cookies. We're not going to eat the cookies. We're going to eat salad later. Fuck. Fuck this bitch. Ooh. Personal beef with her weight. Starting out with an experience of hers at an award show. At the end of 2022, I was nominated for a Streamy Award in the animation category. So I got to walk the Streamy's red carpet and attend the award ceremony, which was a blast. But when all the photos came out, I felt that oh so familiar lava flow of shame consume me. I hated how wide my legs were when I posed. I hated that squishy part under my chin that stuck out when I smiled. But most of all, I hated the way I looked because I knew I was the heaviest weight I had ever been in my entire life. Alyssa talks down about her appearance a lot in her videos. This is despite having decent features like strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes, and vibrant Cute! She's so cute! Skin. She could easily be considered attractive by most people if she just stopped wearing those grandma glasses, picked better clothes, learned how to style her hair instead of always leaving it flat to her- Oh hey guys, huge news. I'm gonna get glasses. So... I'm kind of afraid what I'll look like, but I'm going to get glasses. Head with maximum forehead showing and watch some makeup tutorials. Now, it's kind of hard to see what she's talking about when it comes to the dress. So let's Google an actual photo of that dress. And holy shit, that is bad. Why did she think this would look good? I get why she calls herself fat. She comes from an air bubble, too, I can tell. Yeah, yeah, an air bubble. She's fat, but she's got the double chin a little bit. She's got some fat here. Her titties be hanging outside the pockets or the cups. Okay, Middle Eastern standards, she's fat. Regular standards, she's obviously not fat. She's middle, whatever that's called. But also, um, you know, it's not the dress. The dress is cute. I like the dress. You know what it is? It's her hair. It's her hair. It's not her dress. It's her hair. Yeah, I'm going to say the dress is actually cute. I would say the hair is the problem. Her hair looks too casual. So it looks mismatched. Yeah, which makes sense. We're all a bunch of, she's autistic. She's an autist. You just, if her hyper, if her hyper interest, if her interest is in fashion, leave this woman alone. Also, if she works out her arms, she'd have hella mommy arms, bro. Yeah, her dress, yes, doesn't fit her well because it doesn't cup her boobs correctly. Her boobs are too big, which congratulations, girl. What you do, guys, if your boobs are too big, you do this. You reach in and you pull it up and you make them bigger, okay? You pull them up and you put them in the bra, okay? So you go in, okay? You you grab your titty, pull it all the way up and tuck your bra under. It will push your boobs more up. This is a trick all the cosplay girls do, myself included, okay? So you take your titty and you pull it up. She needs to take her titty and she needs to pull it up. Now her nipples might pop out, which is why her cup size is probably too small. Lots of women don't know their cup size, right? So that's a part of it, okay? Rock says, bro, the dysphoria of her thinking she's fat. Well, to be fair, in my Middle Eastern bubble, they would call her fat. By model standard, she is very fat. Remember, if you grow up, when I grew up, we that is what fat is. Fat, and then, guys, obesity, 600 pounds, that's not fat. That's just like, that's like morbidly obese. That's like, holy fuck, you're about to die any day fat. This is what growing up was called fat. This is what they called fat growing up my whole life. Okay. So again, her cup size is wrong. Her hair is wrong, but otherwise the dress is cute. Uh, whoever animated this scene did not do that dress justice. The purpose of good fashion is to highlight your good features and downplay your bad features. You do this by using different shapes and colors to draw people's attention towards what you want them to look at. If my upper body looks better than my lower body, I can easily draw attention to my upper body by wearing brighter colors on top and darker colors. On oh, wow. Is this autist a fashion guru? What does he look like? Oh, fuck. Oh my God. I'm going to bully the fuck out of him right now. What does he look like? My legs. Side note, if you're trying to lose weight and for some reason you insist on keeping junk food around, then you can pretty heavily reduce how much you eat of it by merely keeping it out of eyesight. With that said, Alyssa gave us two things that she didn't want people to focus on. One was her weight and the other was her legs. Well, all that weird stuff going on in the middle of her dress immediately causes me to focus on her stomach. Hold on, is this him? Is this him? Is that him? It says face reveal, this guy. Is that him? Think before you sleep, wiki tube. Fandom. Is this him? Is that him? Think before you sleep. Is that the same guy? No, they're different guys. Now I'm confused. Is that him? This is him. He's definitely autistic. Yeah, he's kind of cute. Now I can't bully him. Well, okay, fine. Look. Okay, you nerd. What is this? What is this jacket you're wearing? What a nerd, bro. Eh, he's cute. 
she's cute too though they're about the same i'm gonna be real wait where is it uh why do i have so many videos up yeah they're the same level of cuteness in my opinion I'm more into her than him, but I'm, you know, that's probably because of his attitude. Ah, eh, he's cute. Ah, eh, who cares? He's whatever. He's just like a little autist boy. But they're definitely like the same level of cuteness, bro. He's got a little bit of chub too. He's got that cute chub face. See, we would call this chubby. Look at this little chub face he's got. I'm assuming he's got a little bit of chub. He looks like he's chubby. Okay, whatever. See, now I can't bully him. Damn it. You're so lucky. You look showered. If he didn't look showered, I would have made fun of him. A lot of autists don't know how to shower. Fine. Fine. Okay, you're lucky. But you're not cuter than her, bro. Relax. And the overall design of the dress ends up making her look bigger. <laughs> Pretty privileged. True. If he was uglier, I would have bullied him. But yeah, he's got a baby face for sure, Shadow B. He's got a baby face. And she actually she is. She kind of too, though. She kind of got a baby face too, you know? Yes. Second, while you can't see it well in the picture, the animation shows that the dress has a break in it, which brings attention to the legs. Last, if you look closely, you can see the dress is see-through. Why would you pick a see-through dress with an opening in it if you don't want people to focus on your legs? I mean, this whole outfit causes people to laser focus on things she doesn't want them looking at. And well, it's because he's not a psychology member, major, right? Um, but for the same reason that when I look ugly, when I feel the ugliest, I try to look the cutest. Or maybe she picked out the dress and didn't have money to pick out a different dress. Or maybe there was nothing to do and this is what we did. Or... Maybe, 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 maybe. I agree. And this is probably like the things I would ask. You know what I mean? But he's assuming a lot. And I could assume a lot. You know what I mean? But she's just, she probably felt like the, when she picked it out, she thought cute. And also, I'm sorry. Am I fucking dumb? She didn't even say anything about the dress. Didn't she literally say I was the heaviest I've ever been? That doesn't mean she has to cover up just because she's heavy. What does the dress have to do with her being heavy? Mm, his brain is interesting, actually. And it appears the design of the dress ends up making her look bigger than she actually is. Second. Yeah, but it's how she feels in her body. She could be Eugenia Cooney thin and still feel fat. That's like the mental health stuff. He's trying to like, that's what I'm saying. You got to know, are you doing this because of mental health? Are you doing it because of a philosophy misunderstanding? Are you doing it? Why are you doing this? Why does she feel this way about her body? Is she insecure because of mental health issues? Is she insecure because of a philosophy misunderstanding of the self? Like, this is my vessel. Guys, this is my body. This is my ship. This is the thing that's going to move me through life. I didn't choose this body. I'm just doing the best I can with it. But this body doesn't define my consciousness. I think I'm separate from my body. Some people don't. So, again, like, I'm not sure if his solutions are actually what her problems are. See how he's giving solutions, but he doesn't even know what the problem is? And while you can't see it well in the picture, the animation shows that the dress has a break in it, which brings attention to the legs. Last, if you look closely, you can see the dress is see-through. Why would you pick a see-through dress with an opening in it if you don't want people to focus on your legs? I mean, this whole outfit causes people to laser focus on things she doesn't want them looking at, and it appears that there is no intention behind why she's wearing that dress. It looks like she picked something out that she randomly thought was interesting and creative without asking, would this actually look good on me? How do you draw people for a living but don't know fashion? <gasps> Cute! This dress is so cute. Oh my god, he's literally giving her a fashion critique. Is this man a fashion guru too? Terrible makeup, no hair volume, wrong dress color. Is this guy gay, bro? Is this a fucking queer, bro? What is he, a fashionista, bro? This girl has millions of followers, yet if you saw her out in public, you'd be afraid that she's about to pester you for spare change. She you leave the... He's so mean. He's a mean autist. She's a nice autist. He's a mean one. They're both autistic, but she's a nice autist and he's a mean one. I don't like men like this. They're so rude. Don't get me wrong. I could say the same things to her and be so much nicer about it and loving, but he doesn't care about her. He's bullying her. Like he doesn't care about her. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't care about her. He's being mean to her, right? Like I care about her enough to be like, hey girl, love that dress, but we need to get you the right size for your tits. You know, <clears throat> you know what I mean? He just shames her. And she looks cute as fuck. She's hiking. What do you want her to look like a fucking sex model while she's hiking? Bro. Yeah, he says, can we bully him even though he's slightly not attractive? Unattractive? Well, here's the problem. We're getting bullied. You can bully him about his ideas. And right now he's an idiot. But that's just because he's a mean autist. Mean autists are always like this. That's why I don't like them in my audience. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't like mean autistic people. They hyper focus and then they just tear you down. 
And I'm just like, geez, take your hyper focus on something positive, bro. She has the fashion sense and physical self-awareness of Abby Shapiro. Instead of wallowing in depression about how you look on camera with an un... Nice dig at Abby, though. ...flattering angle, an unflattering pose, and a bad outfit, why not work on the things that are causing you insecurity? Well, the good news is that Alyssa actually... Well, because you don't know what's causing her insecurity. That's the only that's the only issue I have with him. He doesn't even know why she's insecure. He's just guessing. But he's saying it like he knows, which is just his autism, by the way. I get that. I say things like I know what I'm talking about. It's just the neurodivergency. So he does do that and tries to improve her appearance with diet and exercise. So what did I do as a young woman who wasn't confident in her body? I started dieting. I found a gym, I found a personal trainer, and I got to work. And after a month of working out for three days a week, 45 minutes at a time, doing cardio, abs, arms, legs, as well as going to cycling and or yoga class once a week for an hour, I lost... Zero pounds? How? I was doing everything right. Calories in, calories out, more greens, mm -hmm. less takeout, gym membership, personal trainer. I will say. I will not. I cannot tell you right now how difficult it has been not losing any weight, doing everything that I'm doing. And a part of it is because I'm building muscle at the same time. But it is very like your body is frustrating. Learning your body is frustrating. Not everything works the same. And it is a frustrating process, like learning your particular metabolism and how it works. Like it's definitely annoying that if you're making lifestyle changes to be more in shape, you might not make much progress your first month because you're just being introduced to fitness and healthy eating, and it takes time to build the correct habits that will lead you to what you want. That being said, not all personal trainers are created the same. Personal training has a really high turnover rate because it's primarily a sales job, and because it's a sales job, most personal trainers are new and they suck. This trainer is all over the place with the exercise recommendations that she's giving Alyssa. She's like wasting time lifting two pound weights, then doing yoga, then a rowing machine, then a leg press, all without enough weekly time dedicated to each activity to build proficiency. Alyssa, did she specifically sit you down and ask you what you wanted? That's what a good trainer is supposed to do. Con yeah, he just like bullies to teach, which I bully sometimes too. I pick and choose when I bully. Yeah, he's just kind of um annoying. I was just like, girl, it's totally normal, girl. You got to like add weights over time. And it's so annoying. Like relax, you'll get there. You know, it takes time. Give yourself a year, give yourself five years. But that sounds also very intimidating to like a neurodivergent person where they're like, I can't even imagine five years from now and you want me to like work towards that. So I just say like, do what you're going to do today. Don't worry about it. Relax. It's good. You know, it's all a journey. But that's not what he's doing. And so he's just kind of insufferable. Considering that all we've heard. Did she take this man seriously? I need to coach women. Guys, I'm going to become a coach after all. Guys, welcome to my fucking coaching business, bro, where I'm going to make you hate men. Just kidding. I'm going to make it so you don't care about these kinds of men's opinion. Like, when these men talk, I tune them out. <laughs> oh! Discord said that's why Brittany is not buff. <laughs> okay. Well, I you know. <sighs> guys, I'm I'm gonna end stream, guys. I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just I'm not feeling it today. I'm sorry, I'm not. Listen, I know it's a progress thing. I know it'll take time. I know life moves on. I don't need to hear you haters in the comments, even if you do pay $10 a month to be part of my Discord. I don't need you to talk mad trash on my arm progression, bro, okay? I will be thick one day, bro. I will be so buff one day. I will choke you out with just the image of me on screen. I will choke you out like this microphone, bro. I don't want to hear it, bro, okay? Oh. I'm getting bullied by my own Discord. Hey, guys, pay $10 a month to join my Discord so you can bully me. Okay, I don't want to hear it. Uh, okay, I'm trying. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, now I lost my train of thought. Uh, he's a mean autist. Oh, I need to coach women. Okay, I need to start a coaching business ASAP where I convince women to not give a fuck about what these men say. Just tune them out. Tune them out. You need to find the nice men who are gym people or nice girls or nice days that are gym people, okay? And those are the people we need to focus on. Those are the people we need to focus on, okay? Those are the people because they will help you and they will never bully you for not being where they're at. They will only encourage you to do better. Guys, people that are happy and successful will not bully you for trying. This man bullied fat people for running marathons. He's, he's a shit person. Shitty people bully people who try. Good people will not bully you for trying. How could you even, how could you think to mock a person running a marathon because they ran it too slow for you? <laughs> You're such a hater, bro. Yo, even my fatphobic family, bro, would literally be like, that's amazing. I can't believe they ran that marathon. That's more than I do. 
Bro, that's how I know my family's good, even though they're fat phobic. It's just they're Arab, you know, they don't know. But like, they would like praise you for running a marathon, even if it took you nine hours. This white man is just cranky. He cranky. Heard from you is that you want to lose weight. Doing a bunch of random exercises for 45 minutes three times a week, particularly low weight resistance training, isn't the best way of achieving that. It sounds like she was selling you a program that you didn't need just so she could have a paying client. Because in reality, cardio is the most efficient way to burn calories. So simply taking a one hour cycle class or a one hour Zumba class four to six times a week would have been much better for weight loss. Honestly, I think personal trainers are a giant waste of money if you're just looking to lose weight as an average person. Trainers should largely be reserved for people who want to learn how to bodybuild, treat chronic pain, and for people who want to learn conditioning exercises to help them get better at a sport they're doing. Well, for that last one, a physical therapist or a certified strength and conditioning coach would be a much better option. This made no sense. Unless maybe I just wasn't working hard enough. But my personal trainer assured me that I was doing great. I might not have seen the scale move or felt like my clothes fit better, but from her perspective, she noticed an improvement in my posture. She saw my energy and endurance had increased too. Well, not only that, but even with yoga, we've been doing yoga once a month, professionally taught yoga on the Discord. And with my fibro and everything, I know it doesn't sound like it, but ooh, last session kicked my ass. Girl, the amount of sweat dripping down my body after last month's yoga session was insane. And when people are like, yoga is so easy, I want to see you do it then, bitch, because it was fucking crazy, bro. And also, I have fibro, so fuck you. I'm d bro, I'm doing yoga and I have fibro. You're all like, oh, yoga's easy. Do you have fibro? Do you have fibro? But also, bro, that shit was intense. It's like you need to build slowly over time. And you know, I'm, I know I'm getting better in yoga because we're doing harder stuff and I'm still feeling pretty good about it. And P.S. Yoga is very like chronic health uh, aware because she knows I have fibro. But it's like, bro, I was dripping. My husband was like, are you OK? I was like, bro, I'm I'm dying, bro. This yoga session kicked my ass. I was like, holy shit. I don't even know why. I was just like, oh, my God. So, again. Um, it takes time. You learn first, you, you notice you breathe better. Then you notice you move better. Then you notice, oh, my 10 pound weights don't feel that heavy. And oh, my five pound weights don't feel that heavy. Like, I don't understand why people like, how is he saying that in a month you're not going to get much done, but in a month you're going to get nothing done. It's like, you're going to get something done. It's just not going to be the things you want. Yes, it's true. When I work out abs, I look in the mirror and I expect six pack abs. Does it happen? No. There's something in your brain that says, I just, I just did this 10 times. Why don't I have Arnold Schwarzenegger arms? That's just not how it works. So the irony of this guy is he's saying things that are just so weird where he's like, it's only been a month. Of course you won't have muscles. It's all, it's, it's been a month. Why don't you have more going on? It's like, I'm so confused. He's confusing me. Even the way I talked about life, I was noticeably less stressed. And although I did agree Great. with her, my back wasn't hurting as much. I was getting better sleep. I will agree that Alyssa's posture is horrendous, so any improvement in that is good. I think she should consider investing in some ergonomic gear to help her sit up straight when she draws and spend some time practicing her standing posture. Posture like this is going to cause you a lot of problems when you hit 30, if it hasn't already. Man, he's, he's a mean autist, guys. That's what I'm categorizing him as. He's just a mean autist. She seems like a nice one. I might subscribe to her channel. I don't watch animated channels, but like... I might start just because of this. Back pain is great too, but to be honest, your trainer probably just said this stuff because she failed to help you achieve your goals, which might cause you to not buy any more training, and she doesn't want to lose- <sighs> Kay says he he literally, well, actually, ing her to death, literally. He's a, well, actually, autist. It's her job. So these improvements are great, but since they aren't what you actually went to the trainer for, I don't consider them a success. Ideally, you go there to lose weight, and then as a side benefit, you get better <sighs> posture and physical fitness. I told her thank you for the reassurance, but I still didn't like how I looked, and I was scared I never would. But she assured me I that is mental health, by the way, that is mental health. I'm afraid I don't. What did she say? Thank you for the reassurance, but I still didn't like how I looked and I was scared I never would. I am scared I never will like the way I look. That is mental health. That's not what you go to the gym for. You can go to the gym. Lean Beef Patty talks about this. Like gym bros talk about this. The body dysmorphia is real dysphoria. It's really real. They really struggle. You, that's a mental health problem. That's why going in the gym isn't enough. To be a whole human being, your physical health is a part of it. Absolutely. So is your mental health. This, this has nothing to do with going to the gym. But she assured me I just needed to keep at it and have faith in myself. Yeah, this just sounds like you're clearly communicating that you did not get what you paid for. And a goal of, I want to lose any amount of weight, is not unachievable, even for the first month. So it's really on your trainer for failing to guide you to that. I understand that I said that you may not make strong improvements in the direction that you want the first month, but the reason that you pay a trainer is so that results are more of a guarantee. Again, this is a failure on the trainer's end. And besides, it had only been a month. It's not the trainer's responsibility to worry about the mental health stuff. I worked with a nutritionist, dietitian, nutritionist, the one that takes education. She was really good, but there was a lot of mental health things that were clashing with the diet stuff. 
So like I'm neurodivergent and I don't like my routine fucked up and I don't like being forced to do things I don't want to do. And a lot of it is like these coaches and these people you work with, they're not thinking about your mental health. And so much of it becomes about your mental health or about your psychological health, however you want to phrase it. And so like working with a neurodivergent aware coach or trainer, I think is more important than working with a neuro neurotypical one. So I would recommend definitely working with neurodivergent aware people. And then on top of that, understanding that by going to the gym, by working on your health, by tackling other things, you will undiscover or unearth a lot of like trauma related things. Body stuff is trauma stuff. You don't go to the gym to work on your trauma stuff. You go to the gym to help you in some ways overlap with your trauma stuff. So some people will say, go to the gym is all I need to work on my trauma. Maybe. It can definitely be therapeutic, but it's not therapy. So maybe, but but mental health stuff and gym stuff are different. Your physical body and your mental body are different. They do overlap though. And that section where they overlap is what confuses people into thinking, all I need is one or the other. You need both. Surely soon I'd know. Two months of diet and exercise, no change on the scale. And I had worked my way up to jogging a mile easily on the treadmill, doing crunches and sit-ups for a minute straight. I was even starting to match my personal trainer's strength. And we worked out side nice. by side. And she told me to keep at it. Don't look at the scale. Just focus on how working out makes you feel, not how it makes you look. But you went to the gym to look better. Your trainer isn't validating your initial wants to distract you from her failure. When did Alyssa say that she wanted higher physical fitness? All we heard from her was, I want to lose weight. To her name is Alyssa? Look better. I can understand that there's no weight loss after a month, but two months when you're paying a professional is ridiculous. And you should be able to get all the fitness benefits she achieved while losing weight. So either Alyssa is getting bad advice or she's a client who is not willing to put in the effort to change her diet. Also, if the, those aren't the only two options, though, I guarantee you. Like, those aren't the only two options. And that's the problem. He keeps thinking there's only two options. And I think that makes sense within his bubble. It's just not true, though. They're, are they doing scans on her bodies? Are they checking for thyroid? Are they checking for all the issues that be, could be going on? Are they, you know what I mean? Like, what are they checking on? Do we even know what's happening? Like, it just doesn't work that way. Because I know for myself, like, I haven't been losing a lot of weight in the way that I thought I would be. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? And a big part of it is, to be honest with you, my theory so far is that I'm not doing enough cardio. But at the same time, like, I can't get there because like my, I can't, I'm not doing cardio. I'm not doing it right now. It's too cold still. But once it gets warmer, I'll be doing a lot more cardio. And I don't go to the gym. I work out at home. So it's different. She's working out at the gym and that's great. But like she's also doing different things. You never know what it is. He could, she could be lying. But imagine it's something different than two binary options you've chosen. So the fact that Alyssa was able to match her personal trainer's level of strength so quickly is kind of a red flag because it suggests that her trainer doesn't work out that much. That's not too uncommon. I worked in the fitness industry for years and a lot of people who train clients are out of shape. I don't think Alyssa's trainer is actually worth what she's spending. Out of nowhere, I started getting fainting spells. Five reps in, my head would get light and... Discord says still behind the fat acceptance guy is too monotone and giving fedora vibes. Oh, hella fedora vibes. De technically a different category of autist. He wouldn't wear a fedora. He'd wear a bomber jacket, which is what he was kind of wearing in that he's the bomber jacket autist, not the fedora autist, but same thing. And the room would start spinning. I mean, my muscles would but... fail on me. My eyes would unfocus. And the dizziness would take over even when I was just walking on the treadmill as a warm-up. I might be wrong, but Alyssa seems to imply that she was having these problems because of eating too little. The problem with that line of thinking is that a lot of things can cause lightheadedness during a workout. And I doubt that lack of food is the issue because she said that she hasn't lost any weight. She previously was gaining strength. And those things won't happen if you eat too little. So unless she vastly decreased her calorie intake to like under 1,200 calories a day, it's probably not the food. Now, Alyssa does go on to say that she did the responsible thing, which was to check in with her doctor to see if there was anything wrong with like her hormones or her heart. Oh, nice. They found nothing, which sounds bad. But the good thing about checking stuff out and finding nothing is that it rules out what might be wrong with you, considering that nothing was found to be medically wrong. And I'm assuming that her doctor advised her to not do intense exercise during her period. That's good, actually. Period. There's probably some lifestyle thing that she's doing that's causing the dizziness, like poor sleep, poor electrolyte balance, light sensitivity. Maybe lack of water. Sensitivity even? and allergies. Get seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Drink some coconut water or. Actually, you know what I learned the most that was bubble popping is like how much sleep impacts everything. Like there's no point to working out if you're not sleeping, basically, from what I understand. I could be wrong, but from what I understand, there's like no point to working out if you're not sleeping. And that's really hard for me because I struggle with my sleep. I always have. So I'm like, okay, go to sleep to build muscle, Brittany. Go to sleep to build muscle. But apparently like sleeping really is – and then women need to sleep on average longer than men, generally speaking, 9 to 10 hours, not the typical 8. And then I got fibromyalgia, so they recommend 9 to 10 hours anyways. And that's a long time to sleep for somebody who's always struggled to sleep.
for an electrolyte supplement, wear blue light filter glasses, and see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. Now, in my opinion, though, you can take this with a grain of salt because I'm not a healthcare professional, but in my opinion, I think it's most likely to be allergies. Stuff like nasal allergies and sinus issues will make you tired and lightheaded all the time. Alyssa animates a lot of weed references in her videos, and I mean a lot. She lives in California, it's legal there, weed is a flower, and yes, you can be allergic to it. If that's something you partake in, then consider taking a break for a month and see what happens. Outside of that, mm. as someone who has faced some pretty mentally debilitating allergies in the past, I will say, change your AC slash heater filter in your house or apartment every month with an FPR 10 filter or a Merc- Okay, this is like good advice. Like, he's not giving bad advice. He's just kind of mean. 13 filter. Invest in some air purifiers, and if you're using a humidifier, you need to clean and maintenance those things daily, or they will spread mold everywhere. So that's my opinion. Alyssa has complained about having lots of health issues in the past, and many common health issues can be fixed by changing- <laughs> EAS says that's why Zoro is always napping. Literally, he's such a napping queen, bro. I really admire him. I admire his napping ability. Your daily habits. So my personal trainer and I scaled back the intensity of the workouts, and we did exercises that didn't require too much up and down. But then three months of diet and exercise, and still no change on the scale. It was so frustrating. My per- Hmm. Personal trainer asked if I was eating enough and drinking enough water, and I promised her I was. I left those unhealthy, restrictive eating habits in middle school. I was even consulting a dietitian and following a very strict and honestly triggering meal plan, but I was still not losing any weight. Okay, so now I'm suspicious. Either you have a terrible personal trainer and a terrible dietitian, or you aren't actually following the diet and putting yourself in a calorie deficit. Considering all the woke stuff from the self.com article from her video that I went over earlier, I wouldn't rule out that her dietitian is incompetent. But there's no way you stayed on a calorie restrictive diet for three months and did not lose weight. Now, She could just be counting calories wrong because actually maybe she's just counting calories incorrectly or it's like an autoimmune or something that they didn't catch. Because I will say like I was counting calories wrong for a really long time and that definitely impacted my ability to lose weight. Now I'm losing weight pretty slowly. I'm doing like a pound. What is it? A pound a week? I think it is. But like, um, yeah, maybe she's counting calories wrong. Because I was doing that. I was definitely overeating, not realizing it. People who are bad at weight loss tend to be terrible at assessing the impact of what they're eating and how many calories are in their food. So now I have to do some investigating to find out what Alyssa's eating habits are. After scrolling down through her community tab, the only thing I was able to see her eating was ice cream. Strike one. In fact, I've only ever really seen her show herself with processed junk food. Here's her with McDonald's. We had the Frappuccino slash adult milkshake ad from earlier. Here's a picture of her grabbing frosted flakes. Newsflash, cereal is not healthy. Next. Cereal is a treat. I buy cereal to have a very specific treat because it's so... It's so like, oh, there's so many calories. JJ says, what do you mean you were counting them wrong? Okay, so I have a scale. Okay, I'm an idiot, but I have a scale. And I weigh everything with grams. And then I figure out, okay, I usually try 100 grams. I do everything by 100 grams because in Europe, like everything seems to be 100 grams. And the way they do like how many calories are everything is like 100 grams. So I'm like, okay, grams or kilograms. Okay, grams. And then I say, okay. Um, beep, uh, at one of the mods, mute beep bop, ban beep bop, one of the mods. I'll get to it if you don't get to it, but okay. So I have to think, hold on. So I have a scale and I weigh the grams and then I weigh everything by a hundred grams. But then before I wasn't understanding exactly like how things, like how many things I needed a day. Like I had too many sugars. Okay. I ate dates the other day and I had like 150, I had like three times the amount of sugar I was supposed to have because I ate dates like the fruit you know what I'm saying so I think in my head I'm like oh I'm not eating that many calories but I'm forgetting about the sugar and I'm forgetting about how sugar impacts my body does that make sense so I wasn't thinking because I don't know what I'm doing I'm an idiot so I was like I was so does that make sense like I was eating dates but dates have a lot of sugar and then there's you know what I'm saying so I think that's what I mean by doing things wrong like, I don't, I, this is not my area of interest. I get really fucking bored doing this. I hate counting calories. Usually my partner helps me with it now because I'm like, I don't fucking do it. I didn't like it when I was working with a professional. I just don't like doing it. But I forget how like things impact different things. So I was having too much sugar in one day, which by the way, irritates my fibro, just because I was having dates. And then fruit itself, there's so much sugar in fruit. You know what I mean? So anyways, I'm just like, I'm so, this is not my area of fun. This is not my expertise. You know what I mean? Abby says, I've been using my fitness pail. No, me too, literally. So I don't know. You weren't counting the calories and the dates. No, I was counting the calories. I wasn't counting the sugar. I was counting the calories and the dates. I wasn't counting the sugars. I wasn't counting like, 
how other things are impacting my, like how much sugar am I eating or how much of this am I eating? Like it's just too much for me. It gets, I'm genuinely burnt out. It's not fun for me. I have to explain to you, this is my nightmare. This is my nightmare having to do that. But I'm trying my best, but it is exhausting. So yeah, even if you're working with a coach and you're working with stuff, like as a neurodivergent person myself, I'm not seeing the progress I think another person would be making because it's so exhausting to me to think about it. And then when I get burnt out, you know what I mean? Like I just want to – I this it's exhausting. So I feel like she's probably doing what I'm doing. You know, she's probably doing what I'm doing where she's like not – this isn't like something she likes – and then she's exhausted, and then she's just like, fuck. You know what I mean? At the end of the weight loss video, she shows this picture of a shopping cart full of what I assume she thinks is reasonably healthy food. We have a giant piece of bread, sour cream and onion potato chips, processed meat, canned tuna, and more sugary cereal, tricks, and frosted flakes again. Does she know that most of this is junk food and eating stuff like this will make it much harder for her to lose weight? The last red flag I found was here. So, okay, I have acid reflux. The acid in my stomach likes to do the vertical boogie of my esophagus, and thus my tummy makes weird noises sometimes. So in my opinion, Western medicine seems to have completely failed to effectively treat acid reflux or chronic acid reflux. None of the interventions for it seem to actually work. The surgery for it is super invasive, and the stated cause is a genetically loose opening in your stomach that allows acid to leak out. In my conspiracy theory style opinion, I think that's all BS and acid reflux is actually caused by a fungus called candida. What causes candida to grow? Sugar, alcohol, and coffee. If she has acid reflux or chronic heartburn, then it's pretty much a guarantee that she eats a lot of unhealthy food or has high calorie habits like alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes talking about it, but if you have acid reflux, then on screen, I have posted what I and many others have done to get rid of it. Of course, talk to your doctor, but basically you treat yourself for candida overgrowth. Anyway, the oh. point is that I don't think Alyssa eats healthy at all, and that's the big reason why she isn't losing weight. I think the restrictive and triggering diet her dietitian provided was probably something like gluten-free or one of those fad diets that you can still eat a bunch of unhealthy food on, not something that's actually calorie restrictive. So we continued the workouts, and I just had to hope for the best. But four months into diet and exercise, there was still no change on the scale, and it mm. made me feel like such a failure. Come on, Illy. You need to be patient. Losing weight is a lifestyle change. You have to be serious and committed to it if you really want to lose weight. And you probably weren't losing weight because you weren't doing enough high-intensity interval training. Uh, no. She needs to be doing strength training if she wants to lose weight. No. She needs to eat more protein to lose weight. I no. 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 Okay, it's really simple, Alyssa. Stop eating junk food. If you have genuinely been trying to lose weight for four months and you still haven't made any progress, that's food addiction and cheating on the diet. She didn't- Maybe, uh, he might be right on that, honestly. But like, is she, cause yeah, I don't, I can't like, all of that is treats to me. So bread is a treat. Uh, I made bread the other day, but that's like a huge treat. You can't have that often. I've been, cereal's a treat to me. Um, I don't drink soda or drinks like that. So I don't have to worry about that. I never drink soda. I don't even like it. So that's not a thing. But yeah, like he's right that if she is eating, like if I don't have like Starbucks or something like that, I use honey and my coffee. I haven't had white sugar in a very long time. Um, so I don't do that. And then, yeah, I'm wondering if she's she's not actually cutting out the junk food. Not that you have to cut it out completely, but like having it once a month versus having it every day. You know, like I just bought a bag of potato chips. I am like only eating so much of it a day, but I also have to stop myself. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, I could eat a whole bag if I just sat there. But if I do that, then that's crazy. So she maybe she's not understanding that part of it have that much weight to lose in the first place and she should have easily been able to complete her weight loss journey at four months now i know all the haters in the chat will be like see i went to a doctor i hired a personal trainer i went to a dietitian i did everything right except you went to a personal trainer who obviously has no idea how to condition someone for weight loss and considering that the article that you referenced from self.com was written by a dietitian who was in favor of intuitive eating your dietitian was likely also Ooh, but i love intuitive eating don't hate i love intuitive eating i'm not gonna lie to you but i also know the difference between like when i am hungry and when i just want to eat because it's yummy not qualified to teach you how to lose weight intuitive eating is good for anorexics not people who are trying to lose weight with a healthy small daily caloric deficit though oh. Alyssa never actually says what her oh. diet was she just said it I was just feel like everything works for different people was triggering why be so brief why not tell people exactly what you ate it couldn't be that triggering because the only examples that you ever show are junk food so I don't mm. believe you actually gave this an honest shot I think you half-assed it are hiding behind the I talked to the professionals see I don't want to think e no, no no he's using negative language I'm assuming she made the common mistake we all make which is not actually counting calories or not thinking about things in a more thoughtful manner. He's like assuming ill intent of her. And I'm saying she probably, I, okay, I had this conversation with my husband. I was like, why the fuck am I not losing weight? He's like, girl, think about what you're eating. And I was like, what am I eating? I was like, I'm not eating that much. There's no way. Do you know what I was eating that was fucking me over? This is so stupid. I called my dad and I was like, you'll never believe what I fucking did. Okay. So I go to my husband and I'm literally like, why the fuck am I not losing weight? I know I'm eating less and I was eating less. 
but I wasn't eating less calories. I was eating less food. It's not the same thing. So I was eating a lot of pancetta and pancetta is just fat. And for 100 grams of pancetta, it's like, I can't remember now, but I think it's like 400 calories, 500, 400 calories. And I was like, holy fuck. So this little bit of pancetta that I was eating every day is a full of fucking fat. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm so dumb. So then I switched to prosciutto because it's half the calories and I still get my meat intake with a little bit of fat, no big deal. But I was literally eating this slab of just fat and I was like, yum. And I was like enjoying my life and living my best life and just eating calories off this little fucking amount of food. So I was eating less food. I was just putting more calories in my body. And so I didn't know, you know, I didn't think about it. And that's when I go on and off of counting calories because I don't count calories every day. It's too exhausting for me. I can't emotionally do it. So I, I can't do it. If I'm being honest with you, I don't know how she does it. I don't know how this, because this isn't, if you're, it's not your hyper focus, if it's not the thing you really love to do, it's just exhausting. It makes me not want to eat or it makes me want to just binge. Like having to like be, I don't want to do it every day. Sometimes I just want to eat. And food is like my flow. I love cooking. You guys know this. So yeah, like I was just eating less food, but I wasn't eating less calories. You know what I mean? And so like being disciplined every day is exhausting. It takes spoons. Sometimes you just want to fucking eat. You don't have to fucking measure everything out. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Discord shared a pancetta, 100 per grams, calories 400. Yeah. Well. And are using genetics as an excuse when you have years of history on Instagram of thin pictures of you. What magically changed about your genetics in the past year and a half that made it impossible for you to be thin? Maybe there's a different way I should be doing this. Or maybe, just maybe... This was proof that all the workouts I was doing was enough. Maybe this was proof that all my body really needed was mm -hmm. a little more stretching, a little more strength, and a nice walk every now and then to make me feel better. And maybe, as weird as it may sound, maybe this was proof that my body and other people's bodies don't need to be less fat to be considered healthy. I love how she completely shifts the goalposts at the end of the video. Your stated goal wasn't health at the beginning. You said you didn't like how you looked in this really bad fashion choice of a dress and you wanted to be thinner. Absolutely nothing was said about health. This is all cope because you didn't achieve your goal. And I don't get why saying that you want to be attractive is some sort of high immoral crime. I want to work out to get strong. I want to work out to get healthier, but I'd be lying if I uh, said that I didn't want to lose the belly, lose body fat, make my face more chiseled and looks maxed. These are things I feel I do not like the way my body looks. And you know, that's not on their own. Those feelings aren't you know necessarily healthy, but also they aren't the main reason I do this stuff. Uh, they're just sort of like a little treat, a little bonus. Why do these people have to pretend? I don't want to look good. That's just a bonus. Wanting to look good is an unhealthy mindset. Bullshit. There's a difference between desiring to optimize the stuff that you can change and hyper-focusing on genetic factors that you can't. Wanting to lose weight to look better is good, as long as you aren't underweight and having a meltdown because you don't like the shape of your ears or whatever is not healthy. You don't have to morally grandstand by saying, I'm more refined because I don't care about my appearance, I care about my health. Well, I hate to break it to you, but attractiveness and good health are often highly related and I'm not just talking about weight. Bad posture is unattractive and bad for you. Mouth breathing is unattractive and unhealthy. Clearly Alyssa and these people do care about their appearance and it's not vain or low class to want to look good. People should aspire to be as attractive as they can be instead of moralizing their failures as a good thing because actually I'm- Ugh, I don't care. I'm going to kill myself. I don't care. I'll do it right now. He's so annoying. I don't like it. This It's unmotivating. Maybe this is my like, see, he's being unmotivating. Like I'm, he's not motivating me. I'm not motivated. I'm not motivated. I want to binge eat. I'm not motivated. This is not motivating to me. This is doing the opposite, which to be fair, for some people, this is motivating. To me, it's not motivated. I am not motivated. I'm not motivated. I'm just not, I'm fucking, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna sink myself into cookies with milk and eat them all day and I don't care anymore. Jesus. Jesus, he's so annoying. You know what? It's cool. If you like it and if you vibe from it, that's good. You know, pfft, tomfoolery in the chat. <laughs> Let's go. No, like literally with peace and love, if this works for you, I love that. I was in, um, I love bullying myself. I don't like when other people bully me. I like bullying, but honestly, it's not about just looking good because it's not about looking sexy, which I think is what they mean to say. I don't think they're trying to look sexy. I think they're trying to feel good, which in turn makes you feel like you look good. Does that kind of make sense? Like I'm not trying to look sexy. I'm trying to feel good in my body, which I know will be sexy no matter what it looks like to other people. Because there's kind of an insinuation that you look sexy for other people. And so I think there's something about that. You know what I mean? I think that's the, the thing you're fighting. Are you trying to look attractive for other people or yourself? And if it's just for yourself, like, does it even matter what you look like then? I have a friend who asks me this all the time. 
she said, it's a girl. And she said, would I want plastic surgery if no one else existed on the planet? She goes, why would I ever want plastic surgery if no one else was here? And I was like, interesting. I think you should only get plastic surgery if it's for yourself. But then why would you ever get into shape or look chiseled if it wasn't for other people? Well, for some people, it's about how they feel and how they look and how those two things correlate. So for me, I want big mommy muscle arms and big thighs. And lots of people will tell me that's unattractive. Don't do that. But I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it because I think it's attractive. He's making commentary that says, Everyone will look and feel attractive in this one aesthetic. And I'm saying that doesn't seem to be universally true. So he's saying things that might be helpful to some people, but don't correlate to all brains. You know what I mean? Ryan says, I'm looking, I'm working out to look sexy. Health is secondary. Hey, based. Valid. It's valid. You know what I mean? Valid. You know what I mean? Some people don't like muscles on girls. Some people do. I'm not trying to... I'm just trying to feel good in my own. Like I want to look in the mirror and be like, yo, I'd fuck me, bro. Because it's about me. But also I appreciate that other people think it's pretty. I mean, I hope it makes my OnlyFans go up. I hope people like my Instagram more because they like the way I look because that's that's the truth of being on social media. People follow Lean Beef Patty because they like the way she looks and they like her watching her progress. So there's something about it where you're like, oh, I hope this does well for work for sure. But ultimately... No way I'm going to lift weights for work. It's got to be for me because like this shit is too uncomfortable and too annoying for it not to be also about me. You know what I mean? So I think there's something about it, you know? Cognitive says you need to use reverse whatever to motivate Brittany. Brittany, there's no way you could walk for one hour. Nah, I can't. It doesn't work on me. Reverse psychology doesn't work on me. I do whatever I want. I work too hard to be this free and make this much money to not do whatever I want every day. So the rule is I do whatever I want because I'm going to die. So I don't, need to rev- I don't need to trick myself into working out. I just work out if I want to. My life is too good. My life is so free. I worked so hard to be this free. I'm not going to trick myself into doing anything I don't want to do. But I will always get the things I need to do done. And that's the difference. I will always get what I need to do done. But what I want to do, that's an option. So you need to ask yourself, do you need to work out? Do you need to lose weight? Do you need to build muscle? Because if you don't, do it whenever you want to. And don't worry about it. If it's a need, it's something you need to do to be joyful, then you better get it fucking done. And that's different. That's different. I'm not convinced she needs to work out. I'm not even convinced she needs at this stage in her life to do the uh, calorie deficit. And I think that's probably the problem. I'm a better person than someone who's able to lose weight successfully because I care more about personality. You're just saying that because you failed. You're just as superficial as everyone else, which is why you wanted to lose weight in the first place. And this is all cope. We've been told our entire lives that you can't be healthy if you're fat. Yet here I am. I don't think you could probably be healthy in a specific way if you're fat in the same way that I don't think you could be healthy and cheat on your partners. I'm not convinced you can be healthy and be fat. I'm not convinced you can be healthy and cheat on your partners. I'm not convinced you can be healthy and at all stages of your life. You know what I mean? Like ultimately, I don't think you need to be healthy. You have no obligation to be healthy. I think we should start there because I think we moralize healthy. Like you're a morally bad person if you're not healthy. I think you are probably better off being healthy, right? You're probably better off being healthy. But also, you have to decide when you're ready to stop being unhealthy. And that's usually mental health related or philosophy related. Like, why? So the philosophy question would be, why do you need to be healthy? That's a why question. And then the question is, why aren't you healthy? Why aren't you healthy? It's probably more related to mental health, maybe. But the philosophy question is really, Why do I need to be healthy? She hasn't answered that question. She keeps talking about the bubbles, society, extrospection, everything outside of herself. Why do you need to be healthy? And then the guy making the video, he's like, he's like, she needs to do this. Why? Why? And I know you guys are saying, well, is she fat? Do we need to define what fat is? Fat is not looking acceptable, like acceptable in your bubble. Because again, in Middle Eastern bubbles, I'm fat. Have you seen my Instagrams? 
that's soft. In Middle Eastern bubble, like I'm still soft. I'm not bulky. I'm not worked out. I'm not like, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm still, quote, overweight. I'm 130 for the record and 5'1". So to a lot of people, I'm overweight right now. Go look at my Instagram right now and tell me if I'm overweight. Where? Here, where's my Instagram? Because that's the thing, right? Every bubble is going to have a different relationship with what they think overweight looks like. How do we feel about it? What does it say about us? And again, that's why I don't care what the bubble say if they say I'm overweight. I have to decide, am I overweight? Because I have to decide what that even means in the first place. Here's, okay, hold on. Here's my, uh, what's it going to be? Okay, so see this? This, see this? See how I have a back fat here? My booty be fat. See how I have this like little bit of a pudge? This is not skinny, right? This, see how like I can tell? Like you might not be able to tell, but like, okay. Oh, Indiana Jones, I love her. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, even this, see how there's like this roll of fat here? Okay, this, this might look thin to some people, but if the right people are watching it, they're like, oh, look, I can see your fat. I can see the fat. Okay, look at that fat ass, bro. Look at that fat, <laughs> Yo, that's because I have weight on me, okay? So for some people, this is big. Like for some people, they can't see it, but I know for facts, like my corset doesn't fit me the same way it used to when I was thinner. This back fat roll here, this here, that's the thing that people are looking at. They're like, what is that? Okay, so look, I'm not far off though. Like I know that. I know I'm not far off. Look at my wedding. Look how skinnier I was. I was like a little thinner for my wedding. You can kind of tell. But yeah, I'm not worried about it, bros. But in certain bubbles, I'm fat because I'm not in the ideal. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Ingrid. You're still fine? Thank you. I, I do love my booty. I'm not going to lie. I love what I love my booty. Let me tell you. So again, when people say like, oh my God, you're fat. It's they're not saying fat. They're saying you're not in shape. I think we've replaced the word fat with not in shape as well. And I think there's something about that that we should probably be more aware of in terms of language. At the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life, but also the healthiest I've ever been, according to multiple doctors. It was around this time I revisited a podcast I hadn't listened to in a while. The show is called Maintenance Phase, and it's mm -hmm. hosted by Aubrey Gordon. And my Yo, you know what the funniest thing is? I got a brother. He's like very anti-toothpaste and very conspiracy theory about fluoride. And he went to the dentist and he hasn't like brushed his teeth with fluoride in a long time. Um, or brushed his teeth maybe at all. I don't even know. But he goes to the dentist and the dentist goes, your teeth are perfect. And he goes, I told you, bro, my teeth are perfect. And I was like, and it's so funny because you will. Like you'll have five people who never fucking brush their teeth. They go to the dentist and their teeth, they're told their teeth are perfect. And you're like, what the fuck? And then you go to a doctor and, you know, they tell you like your teeth are so fucked up or you go to the dentist and they, so it's like, it's so funny. And that's the only dilemma we're going to run into is like your body is uniquely your body and it's going to work differently. I don't know why the fuck his teeth are good. I don't know. Some people have that. Some people, I saw this girl on Instagram or TikTok. She's never brushed her teeth throughout her whole childhood and her teeth were like rotting in her mouth. You know how many of us didn't brush our teeth as kids growing up? My parents didn't make sure we brushed our teeth growing up. So like, I don't know why our teeth didn't rot, but her teeth did. Like, isn't that crazy? So again, like when we're having conversations about, you know, like, oh, well, I went to the dentist and they said I'm fine. So what I'm doing must be fine. It's like, well, what other circumstances are playing a role in this? Like what other circumstances are playing a role? You know what I mean? Does he floss? I don't think so, but I'll ask him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he, and I don't know if he stopped doing that. He was just doing it for a time. And I remember him saying like, ha ha, the dentist said I'm good, bro. And I was like, what the fuck? So again, I don't even think it's that. I think it's a combination of things. Like with her, I don't want to make the assumption like uh, causation, correlation. Like I want to make sure that we're like, mm, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Michael Hobbs. Each episode, they go over diet trends and fads, the history, the myths, the biases. They have really helped me reconsider what it means to be healthy. Wow. This is a very misleading animation. Note that she began this segment with, it's not unhealthy to be overweight. While that technically might be true in terms of all-cause mortality, being a few pounds overweight will most likely not end your life early. But this specific anime- Is healthy dictated on ending your life early? Because I don't care about that. But also, I think it's important to know, like, I don't think smoking's healthy, but I don't care if you do it. You know what I mean? Like, does he have this passion against smokers? I want to know that. Do people go after fat people because they can see it? 
And like, I guess what cigarette smokes, like I'm in Europe, everybody smokes here. Guys, everyone smokes. They smoke in cafes around children. It's a very different life here. But also, you know, people are considerate to some extent. So like, I just want to know if he goes after smokers the way he goes after fat people. Because I'm, I've stopped going after both. I just feel like who cares? Animation is completely inaccurate. The girl on the left is named Aubrey Gordon. And if that name doesn't sound familiar to you, remember this opinion piece that I showed earlier that was cited as evidence in the self.com article that Alyssa used? Well, this girl on the left wrote that article. Small world. But in this animation, she's depicted as a little overweight, when in reality, this is what she actually looks like. Who animates this stuff? She's maybe like 160 to 170 pounds in this animation. A little fat. However, in real life, she's like over 300 pounds. That's pretty fat. Yeah, she's pretty fat. Like 160 to 170 pounds in this animation. A little fat. However, in real life, she's... Yeah, she's pretty fat. That's a lot of weight. That's interesting. You know? It's like over 300 pounds. I really have trouble believing that Alyssa is trying- Phoebe, I didn't see your question. You said, did you see my question? I did not see it. You can ask it again if you'd like. I can't see it in the comments. Trying to be honest about her dieting when she wildly misrepresents Aubrey to make her look vastly thinner than she actually is. This is like the Anita Sarkeesian animation all over again, but much less accurate of a representation. More good news, because of Alyssa's recommendation, I watched an episode of Maintenance Phase, and despite them being politically aligned with Alyssa, actually maybe closer to the radical left than Alyssa is, even they will say that being morbidly obese like Aubrey is unhealthy. If you Obviously. look at the raw numbers, it's true that very fat people have shorter lifespans than thin people. Yeah. It's complicated for the lower weights, and there's a lot of scientific debate about sort of when that association kicks in, and we'll get into it, but that correlation, that, that statement that very fat people are more likely to get heart disease and diabetes and everything you've read about in a million Newsweek articles, that's never really been debated. It absolutely has been debated. Do you know who debated it? Your morbidly obese co-host said that people were wrong for assuming that she's unhealthy in the article that I showed at the start of the video and many creators such as noah sampson often say that morbidly obese people can be healthy but imagine that i don't think we're all saying healthy in the same way i'm not convinced right like they must be talking about we're all talking about blue which is unhealthy and healthy but we're not talking about the same things we can't be i just don't think people are talking about the same thing okay i knew a guy who liked girls who were like underweight and i'd be like oh they're kind of underweight and he'd be like oh that's like the prettiest but I know those girls definitely all got eating disorders, bro. And so I think about that too, how like that's what looked healthy to them. Um, and that's the thing is like when pe when I see very underweight people, I'm like that feels unhealthy. When I see very obese people, I'm like that feels unhealthy. But also who fucking cares? But also isn't that interesting that some people like, oh, I have a friend who does ballet. They all got eating disorders, girls. And lots of people love that body type. But I think it screams, for me, it screams very unhealthy. Like, I don't find ballerina body types attractive because it just screams eating disorder to me. I don't like very fat bodies attractive. It just screams like eating disorder to me. But also, like, you have the right to find that attractive. I just feel like that's your business. It's your body. It's your job. It's your life. Like, it's not my favorite thing, but it's not my business. It's just not my business, you know? Being obese is not good for you. The research is so clear on that that even they have to admit that if they want to maintain their branding as a podcast that is good at research. All right, let's see Alyssa's final piece of advice. A carrot isn't an inherent good food, while chocolate is an inherent bad food. Food is just food. No matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to without beating yourself up about it. I'm done. That was such terrible... Yeah, I think you should too. I, d I agree with that. From a... From a I think you should eat whatever you want instead of beating up yourself. Why would you? Uh, wait, I agree with Vice. that. Good food? Well, chocolate is an inherent bad food. Food is just food. No matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to. Yeah, I agree with that. Without beating yourself up about it. I'm done. That was such terrible advice. I don't know how this video could be considered as anything other than enabling food addicts to not fix her health. She basically just said, I tried to lose weight to look more attractive and I gave up because I couldn't figure it out. So you should give up too and gaslight yourself. That's just not what her video is about. Like, I don't think that was the lesson she's learning. But I think that's also where she has, is with her her journey. But I agree with that. I don't think, I think you should just eat food, enjoy life, bro. But like, obviously, if you, you know, you have a, again, like enjoy, smoke your fucking cigarettes, bro. Enjoy your life. But I don't want to hear you complain when you die of cancer. But also, I get it. It's hard. Getting cancer is difficult. But like also, you know, and also people who've never smoked a day in their life get cancer. And also people who are thin get unhealthy. Like, just. About what your actual goal was. Uh, we're talking about psychology. I just don't think you should moralize what you eat. But I'm pretty sure that's also not what her point was. I just don't think you should moralize what you eat. I think that's weird. You know? I think that indicates some sort of like weird high control issue you have. 
Thanks, Alyssa. You're really improving the world. You know what's great about this advice? Because you conflated being overweight with extreme obesity so you can say that both are healthy, what's going to happen is that people who watch this video that are 300 pounds are going to say, see, Alyssa is fine with being overweight. I don't have to change either. And then they'll eat themselves into an early grave. Stop writing criticism off as malicious concern trolling when the ending message of your video was effectively, if you can't stop doing drugs, then drugs aren't bad and you should take whatever drugs you want and as many drugs as you want. Keep in mind that- I mean, I agree with that too. Uh, Alyssa's videos are clearly targeted at children based on the drugs, drugs, drugs style of animation and the nope, the style of animation is not children at all. No, she does not. That's adult animation. Her animation feels like it's for adults because she's autistic and autistic adults like cartoons. I like no, her animation feels like they're it's for adults. If I saw her animation as an older sister, I wouldn't think it's for kids. Do you guys think it's for kids? References and jokes she makes. I will say that my opinion of Alyssa was far more favorable, specifically until I saw that last clip. That being said, a book I've been reading recently is called Influenced by Robert Cialdini, who is a psychologist at Arizona State University. The book is about what behaviors get people to comply with your request. How do you influence a person to buy a car? How can you convince someone to do you a favor, volunteer for charity, or maybe get a cancer screening? Well, there are tons of psychological tricks that people aren't consciously aware of that good influencers employ that get people to comply with a request or absorb an ideology. The best chapter and the most effective compliance tool in the book is social proof. An example of social proof would be if you're trying to sell a cell phone to a customer saying something like most of our customers prefer this phone and I just sold one to someone like you an hour ago will cause people to buy from you more frequently as opposed to talking about all the good features that the phone has. To a large extent, everybody does things because other people are doing them. Using social proof works very well to get people to comply with what you want. Knowing that is important if you're an influencer and on the positive end, it can be used to decrease things like theft. Dr. Cialdini talks about how the petrified National Forest Park in Arizona. I don't like his vibes at all, bro. I've been there. The Petrified Forest National Park. Mark and I have been there. I don't, my, my brother, I don't like his face. Had a problem with people stealing fossils from the park. Initially, True. when they tried to prevent theft, they made a social proofing mistake by putting up a sign that had the sentiment of, a lot of people steal fossils from the park. Please don't steal. This sign actually caused theft to rise because it gave theft social proof by insisting that it was normal. Because of this, Dr. Cialdini did an experiment to see if different types of signs produce less theft in the park. He talks about it here. My colleagues and I conducted an experiment at the Petrified Forest National Park, where on average, 2.95% of visitors per day engaged in fossil theft. We alternated a pair of signs in the high theft areas of the park. Our first type of sign urged visitors not to take wood while depicting a scene showing three thieves in action. It nearly tripled theft to 7.92%. Our other sign also urged visitors not to take wood. But contrary to the counterproductive social proof message, it communicated that few people steal from the park by depicting a lone thief. This sign which marginalized thievery rather than normalizing it, reduced larceny to 1.67%. Cool. Other studies have documented the unintended negative consequences of trying to move people away from a detrimental action mm -hmm. by lamenting its frequency. After an education program in which several young women described their eating disorders, participants came to show increased disorder symptoms themselves. After a suicide prevention program informing New Jersey teenagers of the alarming number of adolescents who take their own lives, participants became more likely to see suicide as a potential solution to their own problems. In short, persuasive communication should avoid employing information that can normalize undesirable conduct. Before reading this book, my stance on fat acceptance normalizing obesity was that there isn't strong evidence that it encourages people to be fat. However, I do have evidence that it discourages obese people from moving towards a healthier weight, and that was explained in detail. Um he literally fat shamed people running marathons who are working on working out, which is an incredibly discouraging fucking thing to do. How, why is he about to blame fat acceptance? Oh, this bitch. And then be Before reading this book, my stance on fat acceptance normalizing obesity was that there isn't strong evidence that it encourages people to be fat. However, I do have evidence that it discourages obese people from moving towards a healthier weight. And that he discouraged fat people from moving to a better weight because he made fun of the marathon runners for taking too long to run the marathon because they were fat. How does he not understand it's the same thing? It's the same thing. You are also discouraging fat people from working out because you're not understanding them. You don't understand this girl. You don't get them. You're getting one version of one type. They're not your type of person. His category of like self-help is only helping people who are like this. He's not going to help this girl. He's not going to help those marathon runners. He literally discourages people from running marathons because they ran them too slow, which is going to discourage them from even trying because what's the point? He doesn't get it, though, and we all do this. Guys, my work might be discouraging to you. Don't watch me, right? Like what I talk, how I talk, the way I talk, my like everything about me, it might not compute with your brain. Don't watch me. If, you, if you're like, I really fucking hate Britney, don't watch me. I'm not your thing. 
I would never watch this guy. He makes me want to binge eat. He makes me want to kill myself. Because the way he talks is so grating. Why do I want to be, oh my God, he's so annoying. But then at the same time, like it's not for me. This content is not about me. It's not for me. This is not about me. You know what I mean? Oh, man. That was explained in detail in the Noah Samson video. Though after reading this book, I now completely believe that fat acceptance encourages people to be morbidly obese through social proofing and is a significant contributing factor to societal weight problems that Western countries are facing. Of course, I'm not the only one who believes that social proofing is effective. Obviously, fat acceptance advocates and people like Alyssa believe in social proofing because a ton of their arguments are based on social proof, not data. I don't like dieting, so I'm going to reference a self.com article of a person who agrees with me named Christine Byrne, who references an Aubrey Gordon source merely because she agrees. Yeah, Michael says he probably thinks that anybody can fit into the mold with enough pressure. I think he thinks that too. Which is like so two of him, right? My bubble's the best bubble and my method's the best bubble for everyone universally. There's 8 billion people on this planet. Not everyone's going to fit into your category. With her, and Aubrey Gordon references an opinion piece from a scientific journal that was published over 40 years ago. So not only does she have social proof, but she can appeal to authority. Was anyone here actually convinced by facts and logic? No, they were convinced by influencing technique. Like I said, there are people out there like Robin DiAngelo who have gotten rich because of their research ability, when in reality, all of her arguments are just social proofing techniques. So stop gaslighting everyone by saying fat acceptance and normalizing obesity is not having an effect on society. Fat acceptance isn't helping people. It's just confusing people on what's healthy so they think that this person who is five minutes away from a heart attack is just as healthy as this person if she walks on a treadmill for a few minutes a day. Exercise is not going to make you healthy if your diet is full of junk food and crap. Now, on a personal level, of course, social proofing is important. That's why you should be careful about the types of people that you surround yourself with, because you are the average of the people that you see on a regular basis, especially when it comes to addiction. One of the most difficult parts of overcoming something like obesity is that you might have to find new friends and get rid of the old ones, because the old ones will pull you back into your old behaviors, whether they are aware that they're doing it or not. The biggest benefit of being aware of influencing techniques is that the knowledge... Yeah, his take is so basic, bro. Yeah, he says his take is so superficial. It's just kind of basic and it only makes sense for people it makes sense for look if you want to be bullied into getting better that works for some people right for sure for other people that's not their vibe it makes them double down you know what i mean <laughs> star says he needs some ice cream for real for real for real of their existence can not only help you spread positive changes in people more effectively but also this knowledge can be used to protect you from being influenced by those with malicious intent anyway thanks for watching follow me on twitter and i'll see malicious intent okay fine good for you um Okay, boring. Next. Okay. So then this is the video, right? We have to watch it now. Now we have to watch her video because I got to know why he was so pissy about it. This is three months ago. This is perks of being the fat kid. Honestly, her art looks like it's for adults, but it might be for kids. Kids, kids art looks very different to me. So I'm assuming her audience is probably in their 20s or 30s, but... Hi, my name is Alyssa, and for as long as I can remember, I have never been satisfied with the way I looked. I hated how my calves were too wide to fit into the boots that all the other girls had no problem wearing. I hated that squishy part under my chin that- I gotta speed it up, she's too slow. Stuck out when I smiled on picture day. And I hate, hate, hated- He seems joyless. Oh, he- Ramona, Ramona, I agree. He seems so joyless. Yeah. Let's see how Alyssa fares in difference, and let's see how her video is done. The perks of being a fat- Perks of being the fat kid. Shopping for new clothes, even if my current ones no longer fit me. Honestly, especially if my current clothes no longer fit me. Because according to my childhood, that meant I was fat. And based on how I was treated as a kid for being fat, that three letter word brings back so many bad memories. I wasn't aware that being shaped differently than my peers was a bad thing until I started middle school. I was bullied by a group of girls and one of the daily ways they messed with my head was by comparing my body to different animals, penguins being their favorite, and they would follow me around waddling like penguins to mock me. I made a whole video Okay, about first of all, penguins are cute as fuck bullies and my advice on how to deal with them a while ago, but here's a little excerpt I didn't include back then. Okay, so I'd gotten a Halloween costume, but when I opened the package, the costume was broken. So I said that in my Gmail status thingy. Then I got a message from the girl who was bullying me, who I'll just call Minnie. Minnie, the only reason your costume broke is because you so damn fat. Me, shut up and leave me alone. Minnie, oh, now you want me to leave you alone when you always harassing me? Me, you know I ain't any bigger than me. No idea what that means. Minnie, I know, but you way bigger than me. Me, will you shut up? Seriously. Yeah. Ooh, get what it. is this? 2009? Okay. Minnie, why are you the scared one now? <laughs> well, why are you? Me, that made no sense what you said before. None of this makes any sense. This is garbage. Minnie, yeah, it really did stupid. <laughs> me, if you hate me, then why did you start chatting? That's a good point. Yeah, smart. Minnie, because now I'm a join the side you're on when you always cussing at me. I know I'm smart. That's why I'm a be playing sports. What? <laughs> me, yeah, you'll make a good bench warmer. Pew, 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 
Skirt, skirt. I'm laughing about this now, but this really hurt me back then. The shame of being picked on for things you're already self-conscious about feels like lava is being poured all over you. And when you experience harassment like this for days, weeks, months on end with no support, it singes your confidence into ashes. Because the world makes it crystal clear that they resent your presence. They will be cruel to you for it. And if you don't like how you're being treated, that's your fault. That's your problem to fix. So you better change how you look and you better do it fast. Oh, come on. You should be grateful you even have curves. Ugh, that's another thing. Putting aside the suspicious peak in catcalling I experienced as a middle schooler, fat kids can attest to this. Picking out clothes was so stressful. A lot of the stuff we liked either didn't fit us or didn't come in our sizes, so we had to shop in the older women's clothing section to find something that would fit our bodies. So instead of dressing like a cool, trendy tween, we were more business casual. And aside from getting judged by your classmates for how you dressed, you were also getting judged by adults because of dress codes. And we knew those rules came down much harder on us. Sometimes it felt like they only applied to us. While a v-neck top on a skinny girl would be praised for being fashionable, the same v-neck top on me would lead to the school shirt of shame with a side. Ah. This happened to friends of mine. I would be wearing a tank top and my friend would be wearing a tank top, but she would get dress coded and I wouldn't. And I think it was because she was prettier than me. That's my theory. And then my other friend is flat chested and I have boobs and I had boobs when I was young. And if I wore a shirt, I would get sex shamed. But if she wore the shirt, she would be allowed to because she had no boobs. Very interesting of next time leave something for the imagination and so the only clothes you're left with and conditioned to choose so you don't get in trouble or have to endure unwanted attention from creepy older men are things that hide your body and amplify the shame of even rolling up your sleeves and listen i love a good comfy cozy sweater but not in the north carolina 90 percent humidity mm -hmm. summer heat i deserve to wear a tank top just like anyone else so what did i do as a young girl who wasn't confident in her body I started dieting. At the age of 11, I looked over at whatever weight watching, Jennifer Gregg, fitnessing pal, MLM, Facebook scam my parents were up to, and I copied them. Now, was this diet recommended by my doctor? Did I check in with a certified dietitian on a monthly basis? Did I consult with- any This whole video is her just telling her own life story. And you remember how he like twisted it to be like, oh, she's like, she's just telling her own story. She's just a girl telling her own story, bro. When people tell you their stories, try to consider their lives. But also, if you don't find yourself, like, connecting with their lives, they're probably not for or about you. Any healthcare professional for this restrictive, shame-based dieting I put myself through to lose enough weight in hopes the bullying would stop? Nope. Which, unfortunately, is really common for school kids. According to the National Library of Medicine, about one half of teenage girls and one fourth of teenage boys have tried dieting to change the shape of their body. And of those girls, more than one out of three were actually at a healthy weight to begin with. And these numbers are wild to me. Teenage to be honest, when I hear numbers and videos like this, I just like think about what I was going through and how many people I knew and I make it really anecdotal. Wow, Discord, are you sending me pictures of hot Cheetos to make me jealous or envious? I hate you, but also cute. I want to eat those. I love the lime ones too. They're so good, bro. Oh, bro. I want hot Cheetos, bro. Teenagers should be focused on getting good grades, hanging out with their friends, and seeing the Timothy Chalamet Willy Wonka movie. Not counting calories. Why are kids so body Yeah, I think it's cringe. Um, and oh, originally, it was an 11-year-old counting calories. The guy in the last video forgot to mention that. 11-year-olds shouldn't be counting calories. That's true. 11-year-olds should not be counting calories. That's crazy. You know what parents should be doing? Feeding their children proper amounts of food. Okay. Like, hello? Like, hello? 11 year old should not be counting calories. Remember the guy who made the video was like, um, actually they should be if they're fucking fat. And I was like, okay, relax there, brud. Brud? Brud? I don't know what that means, but bruv. Okay. No, 11 year old shouldn't be like counting calories, but the parents are obviously not doing their jobs either. I do think fat kids are a sign of unhealthy parents. I said what I said. It's normal. It's really common. You know what I mean? Like your children shouldn't be obese. And childhood obesity is too real for it not to be the ch like the parent's responsibility at that point. But also parents are dealing with their own fucking traumas and issues and the parents are probably fat. So Shadow B said, I think he said teens. Right. But she's talking about 11 year olds. Right. So again, I don't think it's the child's responsibility to count calories. I think it's the parent's responsibility to feed their children well. And I think that's the difference. Conscious. Why are they getting bullied? Who is teaching them this? Well, we all are, whether we realize it or not. It's called diet culture. According to self.com, diet culture is an entire belief system that associates food with morality and thinness with goodness. And it's rooted in the very colonial belief that every individual has full control and responsibility over their health. No, 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 that is woke propaganda. Everyone knows being fat is unhealthy and anyone can lose weight by focusing on diet and exercise. Calories in, calories out. It is not that hard. Okay, well, I'm glad that works for your body, but 
here's how that went for me at the end of 2022. Yeah, I love this. I think this is like such a deep belief of mine. I have a deep, deep, deep belief that we are all having very unique and different experiences on earth in life. And sometimes we're absolutely categorizable. And my experience with my body is like somebody else's. And your experience is like with somebody else's. But I think that not everybody works the same. I literally, every time I research this, every time I talk to somebody, everyone's body is different. Foods react differently, even with the fibro. I was told to like experiment with all kinds of foods and to see which foods upset me. Even if other people with fibro were like, oh, I can't eat that. Can you eat that? And I was like, I don't know. Even with fibromyalgia, like foods weren't impacting everybody the same. So again, like I, I think when I see something like this, it's clear to me that I agree obviously much more with her where I'm like, everyone's having a different experience. But I don't think, what's his name? What's the guy we just watched? I don't think he's wrong for thinking his version works for some people. I think he's wrong for thinking it works for all people. August says, I would watch a recap over what happened after this to see how people reacted to her posting on Tumblr. Oh my God, people are still using Tumblr. I stopped using Tumblr when they were anti-sex workers. I think my account's still up somewhere, but I don't use it. Okay. I was nominated for a Streamy Award in the animation. I'm assuming, see, I wish people would just slide into my DMs when they feel like they're going to get triggered from stupid boys on the internet or girls. And I could tell them, shh, don't engage. Shh. They don't know you or your life. Listen to your own video. Listen to your own video. That's nice that they, that's his lived experience. It's not your bubble. It's not your life. It's not your category. Category. So I got to walk the streamy's red carpet and attend the award ceremony, which was a blast. But Michael says, I don't think that conflicts with the statement that everybody has control over their health, though. But it does conflict with the statement that the health should look the same and the journey should be the same. He made a whole video saying she's either lying or manipulating the situation because the results should be this way. And maybe that's true, but again, he's assuming that this doesn't also overlap with mental health or relationship with self or so many other things. She probably just doesn't know. He's assigning maliciousness to her that just doesn't exist is what I'm saying. When all the photos came out, I felt that oh so familiar lava flow of shame consume me. I hated how wide my legs were when I posed. I hated that squishy part under my chin that stuck out when I smiled. And I felt awful knowing that I had to order that dress online because they didn't have my size in store. But most of all, I hated the way I looked because I knew I was the heaviest weight I had ever been in my entire life. In fact, I was 15% heavier than I was when I got bullied in middle school. But now, I have a YouTube channel. I have millions of eyes on me at all times, especially when I show my face and don't hide behind this cartoon character. And let me tell you, the things people say in that comment section about how you look can feel just like middle school. So have we seen this before? I'm having a flashback. So what did I do as a young woman who wasn't confident in her body? I started dieting. I found a gym. I mean, I know we just watched it on his video, but for some reason watching it again on hers makes me feel like we watched it before. I found a personal trainer and I got to work. And after a month of working out for three days a week, 45 minutes at a time, doing cardio, abs, arms, legs, as well as going to cycling and or yoga class once a week for an hour, I lost. Zero pounds? How? I was doing everything right. Calories in, calories out, more greens, less takeout, gym membership, personal trainer. This made no sense. And mm, she said less takeout, maybe no takeout. Once a month takeout? Unless... Maybe I just wasn't working hard enough. Maybe I wasn't serious enough. Maybe I just wasn't good enough. And I was too far gone to be fixed. We did watch this before? Really? I thought it was familiar. That's funny. I don't really remember, but I feel like we did watch it before. Oh, that's so funny. Have we definitely watched her before? That's so when did we watch this? Um, I feel like every girl relates to this feeling no matter how they look. Yeah, I, that's the problem. Is like she, even if she gets into perfect shape, might still feel this way. That's why I warn people. That's why Jim Jim Bubbles warn you like, hey, um, there's a meme. There's a meme. Um, how much do I have to work out before I feel great in my body? <sighs> That's the greatest part. You never do. That's like a gym meme. There's literally a meme culture around gym life, which is like, hey, no matter how hard you work, you'll never feel like your calves are big enough. So you'll never stop doing it. When people like her start working out, they're hoping there's an end goal. They don't want a lifestyle change. They just want to be thinner. But the dilemma is that, look, I ask my husband all the time, hey, do we just want to be fat people? And it's kind of like a thing we say because genuinely we think about just being a fat couple all the time. We decide against it. But man, we kind of want to be sometimes because it takes a lot of fucking effort to stay in shape, especially as you get older. You know what I mean? So... There is something like really dishonest, I think, about a lot of this discourse, which is 
the complicated, nuanced inner workings of why you're doing anything you're doing. Why don't my husband and I want to just become the fat couple? Honestly, because it will pull us furthest. It will pull us furthest from our joy, and that's about the only reason. But for some other people, I'm not convinced that's true for them. But what do I know about other people's joy? For us, it just we wouldn't be joyful being fat. But also, we don't mind being kind of fat. Like we play around with fatness a little bit. We get fat. By our bubble standards, we're both fat or have been fat. But by obesity standards, like, it's different. It's a different game. You know, that's why I like Papa Gut and Mama Gut because they're both fat and they talk about it all the time. And there's something really endearing about it. And sometimes I do look at them. I'm like, should we just be a fat couple? And there's something really, like, fun about it. And they do lots of activities. And they both work full-time jobs. And they go to Disneyland. And they work out. And they're like, you know, but, like, at the same time, it. It's not, it's not us. It's not who we are. But what am I going to do? Like, how do you look at Mama Gut and Papa Gut and think like they're horrible people? I just think like they're so sweet and loving. Who cares if they're fat? And I think some people look at them and like hate them. Don't you think it's weird when you look at people and you hate them because of their body weight? Don't you think there's something wrong with you? Like if you look at Eugenia Cooney and you hate her, don't you think there's something wrong with you? Why do you have hate in your heart for how people are having a relationship with their own vessel? Think of this like a ship. This is a boat. You're basically mad that the pirate on the ocean with you has a ship that you don't like how they keep it. Why? It just doesn't. I understand it. I used to be fat phobic. I used to really like care. And look, I make fun of fat people all the time. I make fun of skinny people. I make fun of people. But I don't actually care. Like it's not going to ruin my day that you're fat, bro. I don't care that you're fat, bro. You know what I mean? So again, I don't I don't know why people are obsessed with how people keep their bodies, but I also know they don't care either. There's no way that guy who made the video about this girl gives a fuck about her. Cuz if he did, he certainly would have seen her better. Valentina says, "What was the name of our community the other day? Mid Happy Fat?" Yes, Mid Happy Fat. Our Fat Happy Mid Happy mid fat, fit ma- mid happy, fat, ha- ha- fat happy and mid. That's how, that's a good way to say it. Fat happy and mid. I'd rather be fat happy and mid than a mean autist. That's for sure. I would rather be dead than a mean autist. That's for sure. But my personal trainer assured me that I was doing great. I might not have seen the scale move or felt like my clothes fit better, but from her perspective, she noticed an improvement in my posture. She saw my energy and endurance had increased too. Even the way I talked about life, I was noticeably less stressed. And by the way, my dad had something very similar where my dad is a home gym. He works out all the time. And he's like, why am I not losing my middle fat weight? I was like, dad, you have a dad bod. Relax. You look good. Like it's, it's a vibe. He like sometimes is so he eats. He does everything perfectly. He's old. I don't know how to tell you guys this. You're old, uh, you know, but he sees some people with like skinny, skinny body types. He doesn't have one of those body types. All these people trying to be stick thin as if that's everything you need. My dad does more working out stuff than the average person. He's so in shape. The idea that his body isn't great the way it is because it's not exactly like what Christian Bale, Jason Bateman, like everybody fucking relax. Jesus Christ, bro. Although I did agree with her. My, my dad could bench press this bitch and crack him in half, not her, the guy. I wasn't hurting as much. I was getting better sleep and my mood did recover faster when she did hit the fan. I told her thank you for the reassurance, but I still didn't like how I looked and I was scared I never would. But she assured me I just needed to keep at it and have faith in myself. And besides, it had only been a month. Surely soon I'd know. Two months of diet and exercise, no change on the scale. And I had worked my way up to jogging a mile easily on the treadmill, doing crunches and sit-ups for a minute straight. I was even starting to match my personal trainer's strength and we worked out side by side. And she told me to keep at it. Don't look at the scale. Just focus on how working out makes you feel, not how it makes you look. So I did until out of nowhere, I started getting fainting spells. Five reps in, my head would get light and the room would start spinning. My muscles would fail on me. My eyes would unfocus and the dizziness would take over even when I was just walking on the treadmill as a warm up. We thought it could be something with my heart. Like maybe I had an irregular heartbeat. I mean, my mom does have an arrhythmia, so maybe I did too. So I saw a cardiologist and I got hooked up with all these wires to track my heart over a 24 hour period. But when the results came back, the doctor said I was perfectly healthy. In fact, my heart was doing amazing, but he understood I came here for answers and these tests sadly couldn't explain my sudden setbacks at the gym. 
So my personal trainer and I scaled back the intensity of the workouts and we did exercises that didn't require too much up and down. But then three months of diet and exercise and still no change on the scale. It was so frustrating. My personal trainer asked if I was eating enough and drinking enough water and I promised her I was. I left those unhealthy restrictive eating habits in middle school. I was even consulting a dietitian and following a very strict and honestly triggering meal plan, but I was still not losing any weight. So then we thought, okay, maybe it's my hormones? My uterus does have a history of growing life-threatening tumors for fun, so maybe something like that was happening again. So I saw an OBGYN, I got a ton of blood tests done, and they did an ultrasound of my thyroid, which is a butterfly-shaped gland. Every oh, does she have POTS or for real sounds like low blood sugar? Oh, <gasps> maybe, maybe. I thought I had POTS for a while. Every time I stand up, I get dizzy and I almost black out. It's almost like it's every day. I think I'm just probably not drinking enough water maybe, but it happens every time I get up. I see like spots and I'm like, Jesus, it's every, and so it's like getting really annoying. But yeah, I think I'm probably just dehydrated, bro. Everyone has in their neck that regulates your hormones. And we were all expecting the results to point towards some imbalance or insulin resistance that could explain why my body was like this, but it all came back perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. So we continued the workouts and I just had to hope for the best. But four months into diet and exercise, there was still no change on the scale. And it made mm. me feel like such a failure. Come on, Illy, you need to be patient. Losing weight is a lifestyle change. You have to be serious and committed to it if you really wanna lose weight. And you probably weren't losing weight because you weren't doing enough high intensity interval training. Uh, no, she needs to be doing strength training if she wants to lose weight. No, she needs to eat more protein to lose weight. Actually, someone with her BMI should probably lose weight by- No, no, no. You guys are missing the point. I'm sure there's some other workout routine I could do to lose weight. I know if I cut out some major food groups and restricted myself to a specific number of something every meal, I could lose weight. And I don't doubt the fact that there could be a million and one tests and medical possibilities to explain why my body and so many others have such a difficult time losing weight. Maybe there's some diagnosis we overlooked. Maybe there's a different way I should be doing this. Or maybe, just maybe, this was proof that all the workouts I was doing was enough. Maybe this was proof that all my body really needed was a little more stretching a little more strength, and a nice walk every now and then to make me feel better. Mm. And maybe, as weird as it may sound, maybe this was proof that my body and other people's bodies don't need to be less fat to be considered healthy, which I- <sighs> Maybe. Probably not, though. But maybe. No, sounds crazy. We've been told our entire lives that you can't be healthy if you're fat. Yet, here I am, at the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life, categorically overweight and well within middle school mocking range, but also the healthiest I've ever been, according to multiple doctors. Now, coming to this conclusion wasn't easy for me. I had a lot of unrealistic and frankly problematic ideas about health to unpack. Is she saying? Is she saying? I think, you know what? Can I add something to our vocabulary? Healthy enough. Can I just add something to the vocabulary here? Sometimes you're healthy enough. Good enough. There's a line between unhealthy and healthy. And I just think good enough, healthy is fine. Once you're in the healthy category, good enough. I feel like everyone is aiming for peak. Everyone is aiming for perfect. Just, it's good enough. Jesus fucking Christ, you're good enough, okay? Maybe she just needs to be good enough. Is she peak? No. Is she good enough? Yeah, probably. And honestly, good enough, girl. I really do not think this girl needs to work that much harder. I feel like she's fine. Okay, I feel like she's fine, bro. Work out, get some cardio in. Don't eat as much McDonald's. Fucking enjoy your life, bro. You're gonna die. You're on a floating rock in space. I just feel like good enough is okay. I try just to be good enough. Just healthy enough. Like I'm still in the healthy category, good enough. Because we all have vices. We all have things that aren't like the healthiest. But whoever said you had to be. Okay. I just don't like this idea of like, how are we even measuring healthy? I think that's what I'm frustrated by. What are we even measuring as healthy? You know, it's easy to tell someone's unhealthy when it's the extreme. But when you're in the middle, I mean, I just don't want people in the extremes. Don't be extreme, extreme, like healthy, obsessed, so you're unhealthy. Don't be extreme, extreme, unhealthy, but you look unhealthy. Like, don't be, just be, just go for balance. I can reprioritize my brain. But it was around this time I revisited a podcast I hadn't listened to in a while. The show is called Maintenance Phase, and it's hosted by Aubrey Gordon and Michael Hobbs. Each episode, they go over diet trends and fads, the history, the myths, the biases, and they offer their personal insight and humor on how to be kinder to yourself in the wake of diet culture. This isn't sponsored. I just love this podcast. I've been a Patreon supporter for a long time now, and I say this because they have really helped me reconsider what it means to be healthy, and I can't thank them enough for it. One thing I learned from them that has stuck with me is the idea of body neutrality. Body neutrality is the idea of taking a neutral stance on how we look, not bullying ourselves for what we think we should change, but also not worshiping the parts of ourselves that do align with diet culture. This way of thinking challenges us to look in the mirror and say, yep that's my body and finally celebrate its existence for what it can do not for how it yeah i'm kind of into that fuck it 
If you don't like it, change it. If you're fine with it, cool. Looks. And when it comes to food, that same logic should apply. A carrot isn't an inherent good food, while chocolate is an inherent bad food. Food is just food, no matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, whatever is in it. Unless you have life-threatening allergies or dietary restrictions to follow, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to without beating yourself up about it. Oh, great. Now For sure. I think that's true. Like, I vibe with this. Fuck it. Eat what you want. Smoke what you want. Do what you want. Um, if your goal is to live a long and, like, healthy life, you might want to reconsider some things. But I don't think we should moralize that either. I don't think you should moralize people like living risky lives and dying young. I don't think you should moralize living a long life. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty into this. I just think your body's your body and it holds your consciousness and it gets you through the day. And that's a relationship between you and your consciousness. I think food is food. Enjoy your life. I don't think living a long life is better than living a shorter life or living a shorter life is better than living a long life. I just think living a good life is kind of the goal. Now she's glorifying obesity. I'm not glorifying anything. My point is simple. Don't be a d to fat people. And don't use, oh, I just care about their health as an excuse. Being fat doesn't yeah. automatically mean someone is less healthy or too lazy to look like you or however you think they should look. You don't know these people. But what if they're not healthy? At, even if you stalked this person to somehow come to that conclusion, you're still not allowed to be a d to them. Ugh, okay. Or stalked people. Bad devil's advocate. See, Michael says, I'm just skeptical when people reach these conclusions immediately after not reaching a goal. I don't think she knew what she her goal was. I think that's the mistake is I don't think her goal ever had to do with health or her body or how she looked. I think her goal ultimately was always radically accepting herself because that's our ultimately our goal is always accepting like who we are and then deciding if we want to change it. I actually think the goal in what she's trying to explain the goal is was not judging herself in the first place. And I think that that is the first step. And then when she accepts that she can decide if she really has the goal of working out because I can't tell you how many times I tried to go to the gym, how many times I've signed up for a gym, how many times I've tried to be that girl. And just like, it just wasn't what I, it wasn't where I was supposed to be. I gave up so many times because it was never the goal. The goal was always about accepting myself. And then once I accepted myself and then discovered why I wanted to do things, it wasn't until I got fibro that I actually like started working out all, like daily or like consistently. And I still don't work out daily, by the way. I'm not gonna put that pressure on myself. I work out because my fibro hurts and I also want to have mama, mommy muscle arms. But if I don't feel like working out, I'm not going to work out. You're not going to make me do it. Because again, I get to do whatever I want every day. That's called being an adult. But also, it's not a part of my needs. I don't need to work out every day. Not for my fibro or for me. I want to, eh, but not enough to do it when I don't want to. Now, I need to work out at least every three days, no matter what. So as long as I keep that up, I don't care. But knowing what you want versus what you need is very difficult because then you have to know yourself and your goals. And I don't think she's there yet on her journey and I think I want to give her time to figure it out. You know what I mean? Now, maybe this all sounds stupid to you. Maybe you don't need body neutrality to mend your relationship with food or weight, but I do. Because frankly, I'm sick of crying in dressing rooms. I'm sick of getting mad at myself for eating a french fry. I'm sick of seeing other girls and wishing I looked like them. I'm sick of hating my body and feeling like a prisoner in my own skin because that, that is what's truly unhealthy. No matter how skinny or fat you are, holding yourself to the expectations of diet culture is not healthy or sustainable. And I don't know about you, but I can't keep living like this. I don't want to be afraid or angry or sad about how my body looks. Mirrors were made to just show us our reflection, not to be a weapon of self-destruction. So when I look in the mirror and I start to pick on myself the same way those middle school girls did, I try to remind myself of what really matters. That my legs can sit me down next to the people I love, my arms can hold them, and hug them my face can squish it hey she's got see that's good that's great that's great so she knows what it needs to do and she just needs to maintain her health to do that exactly how it needs to so i can smile and my body can be draped in any clothing and my silhouette can be any shape or size and i must throw away what all the mean girls and the media made me believe about myself based solely on how much i weigh because us fat kids we knew back then there was so much more to a person than how they looked we knew that before anyone else did so why should we forget that thank you for watching my videos mm -hmm. make sure you eat something today and as always stay safe yeah, I'm not mad about that. Okay, good video, great video. I'm gonna like that video and I'll even subscribe even though I'll probably never watch her videos because I don't watch animated videos. That's just not how my brain works. Okay, shout out, good video. Um, Yeah, I vibe with this. Like ultimately, I feel like beating yourself up because you're fat is probably related to mental health. I think forcing yourself to be perfect is also mental health. Perfection is a disease of a nation. Now he replied, woke YouTuber trying to deplatform me. I think that's kind of fucked up. Uh, I want to see if that's true. So this person says illumination needs to be stopped. So this is a hater video. And this is Brion says gets exposed big time false flagger. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, does she false flag? Mental health. 
false flaggings gay in a bad way. And I believe in being gay only in the good way. Ooh, who should we watch? Who seems more detailed? By saying no, I don't hate Ilan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Talk about something that I found to be really pathetic and honestly just over the top. All right, hello guys, welcome back to another video. So I wanted to come on here to talk about something that I found to be really pathetic and honestly just over the top for no reason. If you guys have no idea what this video is going to be about, just let me explain. So there's this commentary YouTuber, Think Before You Sleep, and he's pretty big here on YouTube. He has 800,000 subscribers. And what he does on his channel is he talks about things. Of course, he's a commentary channel and he criticizes a lot of people in his videos. And the reason why we actually happen to be talking about him today is because recently he made a video on a certain creator. This creator goes by the name of Illymation. She posted this video three months ago and it's titled Perks of Being the Fat Kid. I watched this video and after watching it, I would not say this is the best video ever. And there are a lot of things that should definitely be criticized in this video. And it looks like one day, I think before you sleep, saw this video. He really didn't agree. I thought it was a great video. It's just not for you, bro. With it, and he decided to make his own video criticizing. Wick and their viewers have joined us. Hello, Wick Raiders. Hi, Raiders. I think that video essentially in criticizing her. Not for a lot of people. And I think most people, like people don't. Wait. And he decided to make his own video criticizing that video essentially and criticizing is this the one we watched? Yeah, I guess so. I thought the thumbnail was different. Her. Not for a lot of people, and I think most people, like, people don't like being told that they're wrong, and people don't like being criticized. That's why a lot of us commentary channels get, like, a lot of flack from, like, different people. And this is also why the people who we criticize, in most cases, don't like us. But it's like, it's one thing to take something that somebody is saying about you, or giving criticism to you about, and to just not like them for it, or to not agree with them. But it's a whole nother thing to try and, like, get them deplatformed for it. All because you don't like that you had a video made on you. Because that's exactly what happened in the situation. She made her video about the perks of being a fat kid. He went on to make his video criticizing her video. She sees it, and she's not too happy about it. And then nine days ago, Think Before You Sleep put out this video titled woke youtuber is trying to deplatform me and i think we know who this is in reference to now in this video tbys details how she was false flagging his channel essentially if you guys don't know what false flagging is it's essentially where you report somebody's video and you don't do it because there's actually something in the video that isn't supposed to be there something that would go against the community guidelines no you do it for the main goal of being malicious and trying to get the video taken down for whatever you can because you don't like it because somebody criticized you and your video because i'll be honest here the criticism that tbys gave you or your video of course you're not gonna like it because you probably put a lot of hard effort into your video maybe not with the research but and you want it to be right and you want people to enjoy your video and you don't want to be criticized because you know, you were wrong. Uh, hi everyone. I usually don't start videos out like this, but today is a special occasion. Earlier, I found out that someone I made a video on got offended and has started a mass flagging campaign against me to try and get this video taken down. For everyone who was out of the loop, a few days ago, I made a video about a YouTuber who goes by Illymation or Alyssa, where I basically spent 30 minutes saying, I don't like your video, and here's why. A thing that many YouTubers do. I've criticized other YouTubers, other YouTubers have criticized me, sometimes we have a little internet battle, those are fun, and by the end of it, everyone moves on with their life after about a week or two. Except Alyssa. Now, because of the urgency of the situation and considering that my channel is on the line because Alyssa has millions of followers and she's well connected to a bunch of other powerful YouTubers, I rushed to make a community post about it just in case I got a channel strike before I got the chance to comment. If you already read that community post, I gave the gist of the situation there, but I'll be going further into. In case anything happens, I thought I would like I would let everyone know what's up. Thanks to a viewer. It has come to my attention earlier today. But Alyssa from the channel Elimation has started a flagging campaign against my channel before the video I made reacting to her video since his video went, since his video went live i've been getting hate comment bombed on my fat kid video and other vids on my channel as well as twitter and insta i submitted reports but it takes a while for human review at youtube i chatted with help desk person today in live chat help section she was very helpful unfortunately i just have to sit what however if you or anyone else is reading this so is she reporting the commenters because she should ban them all or is she reporting him I do think reporting him is in bad taste and I don't like that. So I do disagree on that. I think if you're a YouTuber and you have comments on, you got to get ready for this. I don't like him. I think he's a mean autist and she's a nice autist, but she also sounds like a weak autist too because like his video wasn't that bad, but his viewers probably are. His videos are, pro his viewers are probably a cesspool of people, right? But I don't have any evidence so far. So like, is she just mad about the hate? Because she should report the comments if the comments are really bad, right? The detail in this video. That being said, earlier I received an email from a follower giving a well detailed description about how Alyssa is trying to get me a channel strike because she didn't like a video that she admits to not. Didn't see the total creep who did a takedown on your fat animation video. It's the exact sort of insane you'd expect from someone mad at the idea of weight isn't the only thing that life that matters. Yeah, I didn't watch it. A friend did though and it gave me the rundown. I advise others not to watch the video or his channel either. Do not engage. Don't give him a single second of watch time or ad revenue. Ah, uh, she's a weak autist. Okay. So she's too weak to watch the video herself, which, by the way, wasn't even that bad. But also, she doesn't have to watch it. She's not obligated to. But I do think she, if she false flags him, that's fucked up. But let's see what proof they have that she did that. Not even watching. Now, I just wanted to say, not everybody who makes videos on other creators has constructive or good criticism. I mean, sometimes you just get the people who flat out hate you and want any sure. little thing. To I don't even false flag those people. People who make bullshit videos about me, I just ignore them. I don't even thumbs them down. I'm going to be real with you, bitch. 
I don't even think about you. That's how I know I'm grown up. I don't even think about it. I just go, eh. I share it with my Discord though. We do meme about you there against you to hate on you and they just spew the most random bs on their video so it's pretty much just a hate video it's not even a criticism video and i do not want my viewers going on people's videos defending me let them talk their shit girl i don't care in the difference between a criticism video like a constructive criticism video and somebody who's just making a hate video because they simply do not like you is that with constructive criticism of course you're being criticized but the criticism is meant for you to take it yeah but he wasn't good at criticizing her either i don't want to watch this where's this guy hi hold on uh, hi everyone. I usually don't start videos out like this, but today is a special occasion. Earlier, I found out that someone I made a video on got offended, and I started a mass flagging campaign against me to try and get this video taken down. For everyone who is out of the loop, a few days ago, I made a video about a YouTuber who goes by Illumination or Alyssa, where I basically spent 30 minutes saying, I don't like your video. Like, look, when I get cesspool of comments on my videos, guys, I'm just gonna block you. If you, I know the difference between constructive criticism and just hate mobs. And if you don't disagree with my assessment of that, you can go cry on your mom's tits about it, because I don't care. I'm gonna block you. Oh, and here's why. A thing that many YouTubers do. I've criticized other YouTubers. Other YouTubers have criticized me. Sometimes we have a little internet battle. Those are fun. And by the end of it, everyone moves on with their life after about a week or two. Except Alyssa. Now, because of the urgency of the situation, and considering that my channel is on the line because Alyssa has millions of followers, and she's well connected to a bunch of other powerful YouTubers, I rushed to make a community post about it just in case I got a channel strike before I got the chance to comment. If you already read that community post, I gave the gist of the situation there, but I'll be going further into detail in this video. That being said, earlier I received an email from a follower giving a well detailed description about how Alyssa is trying to get me a channel strike because she didn't like a video that she admits to not even watching. If you didn't watch it, how do you know what's in it? Well, a friend of hers told her it was bad. Wait, isn't this the exact kind of research that I criticized her for in the video? That's funny. Now, before we go any further, I will say I that- I hate him. Ugh, he's so unlikable, but I don't want him to get his channel taken down over a false flag, but he's so annoying. I began this journey with a bunch of people saying that Alyssa was deleting comments on her perks of being the fat kid video and Good. put a pause on the comment section. I understand a lot of people are going to cry Good. censorship, but also I will point out that anytime someone makes a video criticizing a creator, the vast majority of the new comments on said creator's video will say, LOL, you're dumb and I don't like you. While I don't mind if people write comments that include polite and constructive criticism, unfortunately, asking for viewers to be courteous to other creators that I cover on this channel does not actually stop comment brigading, no matter how many times I've done it in videos, and it doesn't work when other creators do it either. Unless someone has actually engaged in criminal behavior, mm. I think generally YouTubers don't want their followers filling up another creator's comment section. I also think- Hey, that's pretty good of him, because it's true. It ruins the vibes for my viewers. When people are just writing comments like, oh, Brittany, your nose is so big, you're so stupid, you think you're a therapist, I hate you, dumb bitch, like, that's gonna ruin the vibe for my people. You know what I mean? So I don't like that either. So I, I hope I hope he's saying what I think he's saying, which is to say, like, don't she has the right to block your comments and stuff like that. <laughs> Kiki says, what's research on her life? Yeah, I know he's he honestly he went after a girl who's just talking about her life and acting like she she didn't act in any way like she was a professional. That's what I mean. His video was stupid, but. OK, like that's what I'm saying, Like you can't even take him seriously. It was a video about her own life. I don't know what it had to do with you, bitch it's well within a creator's right to block or mute comments on their channel that are mm -hmm. essentially harassment and not an actual discussion. However, this comment brigading behavior appears to just be a fact of nature that creators can't control. So really, it's on YouTube to make an interface change that addresses this problem. We already have subscriber-only mode on live chat. I don't see why that feature can't just be added to video comment sections as well. Mm. You would be shocked at how many people would lose their interest in saying, LOL, you're dumb, if they had to wait 10 minutes or 24 hours to say it. This would heavily cut down on comment brigading without removing the ability to provide constructive criticism and without having to full-on censor the comment section. Mm. Anyway, Alyssa posted this on Tumblr. Of course it was Tumblr. The comment thread starts out with a post saying, Did you see this total creep who did a takedown of your fat kid animation? Alyssa responds to it by saying, Yes, frowny face. I didn't watch it. A friend did though, and gave me a rundown. I advise others to not watch the video or his channel either do not engage don't give him a single second of watch time or ad revenue yeah real mature i'm going to start a mass flagging campaign well it's because you're a mean autist bro nobody wants you in there i don't want any of this guy's community in my community there's no way any of them are nice there's a possibility and i'm into that you know i like to poach a couple off here and there but like i don't i don't like him very much and i don't like engaging with people who think like this because they're too black and white for me but also i don't think you should be falsely flagged so i'm still waiting for that part to come up but it would make sense if I, like, you guys already know, like, we don't like him very much. We can just tell. He's not our vibe. But also, if you want to go check him out, do that. But for her community and her bubble, it would make sense for her to tell people not to go give them views. Right? Like, it's just, but also, I don't tell my viewers what to do. You're adults. You can do whatever you want paying for a video that I didn't watch and then tell my followers to not watch it either because surely they shouldn't be allowed to develop their own opinions on content that is critical of me. Gee, that doesn't sound like a cult at all. Oh my God, this guy's such a pussy, bro. Oh my God, she's telling her followers not to check out my video. Bro, shut the fuck up. These people are such pussies, bro. Everyone is such a pussy on the internet. Who fucking cares what people say about you? Move on. Oh. God forbid people on the left explore some of the viewpoints that exist on the right because that is scary. Oh you know yeah, because that definitely, that, people are so bubbled, bro. You're bubbled. It's to watch a video without giving it ad revenue, right? For example, you could watch it on my Rumble channel where I basically re-upload everything for free. The link is in the description. Moving on to what her friend said about the video because everyone knows that a game of telephone is always the best way to get the most accurate representation <sighs> See, of See, he's such a bitch. He's so unlikable. He's so sarcastic. He's such a little autist, bro. Anyways, finish the entire video. Guy is just dog whistling to misogynist. 
Well, that certainly is a completely non-biased and fair assessment of my video that not only brings up my bad points, but my good points as well, and totally doesn't preempt Alyssa to hate me before any of the video is... Finish the entire video, guys. Just dog whistling to misogynists using phony generalized life advice guy. Suggestions like get plenty of sleep, eat sugar, blah, 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 fat chicks, blah, blah. It's been a very... Blah, 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 blah. Pretty much anytime he interjects his own opinion, it is either non-factual opinion or non... This is so stupid. Oh, my God, bro. I hate this. I don't even want to read this to you. It's just her friend assessing, like, what it's about. Yeah, he's obviously fucking annoying. How about that? Just be like, he's fucking annoying. Don't give him time of day. Watch it if you want to watch it. But, like, also, it's just, like, a bullshit video. There's no reason to watch his video. It's literally useless. It gave nothing to the conversation except for his own viewers. It didn't help her. It was never about her. It never was to help anyone like her. So, like, I would tell her, oh, you don't need to watch this video. It's not for you. He didn't make the video for her. Do you know what I mean? He didn't make the video for her. He made the video for his viewers. So I don't know why she would need to watch it. But she better not have false flagged him. Highest and fair assessment of my video that not only brings up my bad points, but my good points as well, and totally doesn't preempt Alyssa to hate me before any of the video is discussed. Sarcasm aside, may I remind people like I did in this video here that while my viewership is mostly male, my female audience is between 15 and 20% on a typical month. If cool. I was just posting radicalized misogyny in every video, then I wouldn't have this many women watching the channel. Now <laughs> Yes, you would. Please. Let's continue with a completely unbiased assessment. Women from are very misogynistic. Melissa's friend. He spends a very high percentage of the video personally attacking Illy's appearance. Well, first of all, the fashion section was less than 10% of the content. It was 2 minutes and 45 seconds of a 37-minute video. Second, you also forgot to mention the part where I began that section highlighting Alyssa's good features to aim people's attention towards and gave two examples of what she looks like when she styles herself correctly and compared that to when she styles herself incorrectly. The reason I did that is because many people think they're ugly when they actually aren't. They just have bad fashion. I did a whole video about it here discussing multiple YouTubers. This is so autistic. I love it. He's so autistic who would look way better if they just took care of their appearance. Alyssa would be just as attractive as all the people she said she compares herself to. Yeah, people are allowed to be ugly. You guys, you're allowed to be ugly. Pretty privilege is a thing, and you will benefit in society, and people will treat you nicer if you dress yourself better, but you're allowed to be ugly. The perks of being the fat kid video, if she just learned good fashion. Can we all see why you should watch a video before you rile up a hate mob? When you hear, personally attacking Ellie's appearance, there are a lot of ways that can be interpreted. Some of them can be cruel and malicious bullying. Others could be, hey, you're actually not ugly. Just do these things here, and you'll look great. In order to determine which one it is, you need to invest- He literally thinks he was nice to her. He literally thinks he was nice to her. That's the problem. He doesn't understand he's a mean autist. He was not nice to her. He was very mean. That's what I'm saying. He literally thinks he was helping her. That's his autism, by the way. Like, he literally thinks, like, I was nice to her. I helped her. I gave her good advice. Yeah, but you said it in a way. You know what I'm saying? Like, she doesn't need to hear it from you, girl. To get further, Alyssa's friend says this next. My judgment is that this- and By the way, his advice would have worked for somebody else, but not for her. That's why I'm saying it wasn't about her. He keeps thinking he's helping her, but it's like you're not getting to know her. You're not valuing her as a consciousness. So... I appeal to the same audience as your Jordan Petersons and Ben Shapiro's without any of the qualifications that those two <laughs> regrettably have. Why would she assume that I'm a fan of Ben Shapiro when I made fun of his sister's terrible fashion recommendations in the very same video? I love how she glossed over that one, but at the end of that image, she's making an appeal to authority argument by saying that Jordan- Because you will have overlap with those communities much more than a progressive community. I don't know why you're acting like that's crazy. Jordan Peterson has a degree in psychology, Ben Shapiro is a lawyer, and I'm not qualified to speak because I'm not a psychologist or a lawyer. Well, for one, we're talking about health and fitness here, and what sort of certifications does Alyssa have in either of those fields to be qualified to talk about- She's talking about her life, you autist. Alyssa never mentioned any- She's talking about her life. He doesn't- did listen to this beautiful argument. He's so autistic. Feminist he's so dumb. To authority argument by Not because he's autistic, but his autism is making him. And that Jordan Peterson has a degree in psychology. Ben Shapiro is a lawyer, and I'm not qualified to speak because I'm not a psychologist or a lawyer. Well, for one, we're talking about health and fitness here. And what sort of certifications does Alyssa have in either of those fields to be qualified to talk about them in her video? Yes. She was talking about her life. Who does have certifications to talk about fitness? Me. I don't. She wasn't making a fitness video. She was making. This is my story of my bullyhood, my childhood. She's not talking about fitness. That's what I mean. He doesn't get it. It. She's not making a video about fitness or health. She's making a video about her life. And as it as she relates to fitness and health, he doesn't get this. Like, that's what I'm saying. He keeps treating her like a authority figure. She's just talking about her life. Mention it a lot because constantly talking about your qualifications sounds a lot like insecure. That's me. They do. People do that to me, too. I'm just talking about my life. I'm not claiming a place of authority. I'm just saying, hey, I learned some things. Do you want to? But I'm not like, I don't have a, I'm just talking about my life. But people are like, Brittany's acting like she's a, she, she has qualifications and qualifications in my life. Yeah, bitch. I'm the one who lived it. Alyssa just talk about her life, bro. Or bragging. But I did say I was a fitness professional in my reaction to Alyssa. And my personal qualifications are a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. And yeah. 
oh, he's so autistic. Nobody cares. You're basically commenting on her personal life. SCA personal training certificate and a 200 hour yoga teacher certificate. I also have about 12 years of combined experience in the fitness industry and in sports. And I taught for about 10 of those years. I am very well educated in this field. I constantly learn new information in it. And it's one of the reasons why my fitness- He's so sweet. I like him. He's so sweet. He's like a dumb little brother. He's so autistic. This is what I'm saying. I can't even be mad at him. He's hyper-focusing. He doesn't get it. I, I can't even, I can't be mad at him. I can't. I just lost it. I stopped being mad the instant he just said that. Oh, I lost it. He's so sweet. Oh, he's so sweet. He's like, I have a degree and I went to school and I do yoga. I'm like, I have a degree though. I have a degree. Like, he's so sweet. Nobody gives a fuck about your degree. <laughs> when you're talking about this woman's life, he's so sweet. I went to school and everything. Honestly, that's really impressive. It's It's hard to do school. I'm not mad at him. And genuinely, I know I'm being a bitch, but that's because he's being a bitch. But I'm not mad at him. He literally thinks this is about his educational background. He has no idea that, like, she was just making a video about her life. And now you made a whole video claiming your credentials matter. Do you have the credentials to talk about her life? I think he'd say no, but does he know that? Like, I, I wonder if I sent him, like, just this clip and I said, hey, she was talking about her life, not about fitness. She was talking about her relationship to fitness. You don't need a degree in kin 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 was it kinesiology to talk about Alyssa's life? Alyssa doesn't need a degree in fitness to talk about her life. And weight loss videos do so well. It's because my advice actually works and has resulted in many people losing weight. Again, if we all have to have degrees in this stuff, where are Alyssa's qualifications to give health advice to kids? Where's her? She wasn't giving health advice to kids. He keeps saying it was for kids. He keeps saying she's giving health advice. None of those things are true. That's not, we just watched, that's why we watched the full video. Because I had a feeling that's not what she was doing. Her degree. All she did was talk about how uneducated she is on this subject and starts the video out by saying this. I started dieting at the age of 11. I looked over at whatever weight watching Jennifer Craig, fitness and pal, MLM, Facebook scam my parents were up to, and I copied them. So she's preempting the video telling you that she's unqualified. And then she spends the whole video talking about how the advice of the professionals that she chose to listen to didn't lead her to her goals. Anyway, Alyssa's friend goes on to say. He's so sweet. Like, he just doesn't know. And this is Brittany Venti's partner, you said? Checks out. Say, blah, 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 cherry picks, blah, blah, non-academic sources, which is really funny because Alyssa's main sources were a magazine and a fat acceptance advocate. Hell, they because didn't- Because it was about her life. It was about her life, about what she understood about her life. She's- Even put a person's name on this 20-year-old article. Meanwhile, I actually gave proper citations that lead you directly to the source. Oh. I actually- Um, but actually, um, actually, I actually gave sources. Oh, he's so sweet. I gave the names of the professionals that I was quoting. I showed a video using indirect calorimetry to display the differences on what types of exercises burn the most calories. And I linked a Noah Sampson video where I go very heavy into the data about why fat acceptance is bad. An argument so good that even Noah had to agree with it. So I must admit that in my prior video, I made a mistake. Well, two mistakes. The first mistake was the way that I made one of my arguments. I argued that fat representation in media can help promote healthy habits. This line of argumentation is not great. It's a stretch because it relies on a lot of correlations. A good chunk of Think Before You Sleep's video covers this flaw in argumentation. So I'm hereby raising a white flag on that argument. I think it's a bad argument. I'm not sure what a literal professional's well documented opinion is, but considering that I'm also a certified professional. Yeah, she also said she went to her doctors, got her medical stuff tested, and went to a coach. But ultimately, or a physical fitness coach, but ultimately decided that the point of the video was actually that her goal changed, that it wasn't about looking good or feeling good. It was about actually having a good relationship with her body, which is a journey and will take a long time. Professional in this field, it's my word against theirs. So welcome to a stand. I'm not a big fan of Noah myself because I don't watch that part of YouTube really, but I wouldn't even like, why are you even engaging? You know what I mean? Like, it's just so interesting, I guess. Like, isn't that amazing how like this is what I'm saying about bubbles, guys. So when one person in one bubble views a person's video and goes, oh, she's taking up, she's, this is what she's saying. We watch the same video and we're like, that's not what she's saying. That's all of life's conflict. All of life is people talking and misunderstanding each other. That's not what she said. That's not even what her video is about. We're only nine minutes into a 30 minute video. She better have false flagged him because right now I'm seeing no false flagging. False flagging. Matt Mundane did this back in the day, a YouTuber. I worked with him at an event and he showed up and I didn't know it had happened, but he falsely flagged people's channels and proved it on stream. It was a mess. It was like, I was like, I can't believe he got blacklisted from all the communities because it's like super, it's a super full pod to do this. He hasn't shown any proof yet that she flag, false flagged his channel. Isn't that interesting? You know what false flagging, it means you go into YouTube system 
and you literally say this channel deserves a strike or to be taken down. All she said is she was upset about the comments, but not about the video. So I'm a little confused on why he's calling it a false flag. Wait. Last, her friend ends off her comments by denying that Aubrey Gordon is a very ideological radical leftist. To which, if you actually read the stuff that I posted on screen during her segments, you could easily see. I didn't just say that without proving it. And yes, her politics are relevant, and so are Alyssa's, because Alyssa loves to abruptly insert her leftist politics into videos for kids. Another memorable kid. It's not a video for kids. Am I crazy? Somebody get me her age analytics. There's no way kids are watching the... Well, there's a... I mean, this is a video for kids online, obviously. But it doesn't feel like she's making videos for six-year-olds. It feels like she's making videos for teenagers and 20 and 30-year-olds. Am I crazy? I feel like this... There's no way. Can somebody get her me her age analytics? I'll call Devin. One day while I was getting snacks ready, this little... I'm going to say 15 to 30 as her age analytics. When I hear kids, I think elementary students. Obviously, this content's fine for high schoolers. What are you guys, prudes? What, you think a 15-year-old can't handle this video? Dude, stomped and stormed in. Did not pass the snack table, did not collect the Cheez-Its. And that's how I knew something was up. So I sat down with him, but before I could get a word in, he turned to me and said, Do you know what the most evil thing in the world is? Plastic. And he goes off about littering, landfills, fossil fuels, acid rain, CO2 emissions, our carbon footprint. This will do just learn about pollution, and he was fuming. Um, why is this video in this video? What is he even doing? What does he make me watch this? What is this? And I love that for him, because, you know, there are people my age who think global warming is a myth. So I'm here to show you guys the kids are all right. Yes, because telling a little kid that the world is being destroyed is completely appropriate and not traumatic at all. Does anyone remember that a part of Greta Thunberg's backstory was that learning about climate change made her anorexic at 11? Whatever your politics are, we should not be telling young children that the world is ending. By the way, when I say woke left, I don't mean the left in general. I mean the radical left who are pro-cancel culture and have been promoting the very unhealthy message that being 300 pounds does not cause health problems. And second, by the way, it's not like there aren't people on the radical right who are pro-cancel culture. The America First movement is very into cancellation and deplatforming. Why are you putting this man's face on my video? Performing, and I've been very critical of that. And no, I didn't just assume that Aubrey was 300 pounds. I showed her saying it in an article. Anyway, Alyssa goes on to say that she reported me to YouTube and is waiting for a human to review my video. Hold on. Since his video, okay, since his video went live, I've been getting hate comments, bombed on my fat kid video, on other videos on my channel, as well as Twitter and Insta. I submitted reports, but it takes a while for a human review at YouTube. I chatted with the help desk person today in the live chat help section. She was very helpful. Unfortunately, I just sit tight. I want to see her say she's taking the video down. However, if you or anyone else is reading the comments across the video, since it went live, I've been getting hate comments and bombarded on my cat, fat kid. Oh, another video. I submitted reports. What does that mean? What does that mean? Obviously, if she false flagged him, that's fucked up. That's not what I said, but okay. I'm just confused. Yeah, her friend probably assessed his video incorrectly. I don't get... A false flag is not the same as reporting comments, but what is she reporting? She also chatted with the help desk person and really put a lot of her time and energy into trying to get me deplatformed when really she should be busy enjoying her vacation in Japan. Has no one ever... Okay, I don't know why you're stalking her to see that she's in Japan. Ever reacted to her content before? Wait like a week and everyone will forget about it. In fact, if you said nothing, everyone would have forgotten about it by the time you got back from your trip. Last, Alyssa gives a call to action to her followers by saying, however, if you or anyone else reading this comes across this video, please report it for cyberbullying. Make oh, there it is. She fucked up. She fucked up. However, if you or anyone else reading these comments across this video, please report to Cyber. Oh, she's crazy. She's mentally unwell. You guys know this is mentally unwell activity, right? I feel bad for her. Ooh, if she considers his video cyberbullying, she's mentally unwell. That sucks. I really liked her for a minute. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, guys. Auntie Brittany is going to hear to tell you, you can't do this. This is not okay. He made a comment. He had an opinion. It was not cyberbullying. Damn, that sucks. However, if you or anyone else reading these comments across, uh, reading this comes across the video, please report it for cyberbullying. Does she wait, 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 wait? However, if you or anyone else reading this comes across this video, yeah. Please report her for cyberbullying. Oh, that sucks. She made a call to action. She made a call to action. That's so bad. <sighs> Why did she do that? Lexi says, do you think she actually believes it's cyberbullying though? Because then her intent would be in the right place. <sighs> Could a functional, well, if she's unfunctional, yes. Absolutely. But if not a functional, if a functional adult wouldn't come to this conclusion. Um, But uh. Yes, she could absolutely, like, I hope YouTube makes the right decision and doesn't give him a false flag. Absolutely. It's it's not cyberbullying, guys. This is what cyberbullying is. He made assessments I think were wrong. Not my favorite tonality. 
but definitely not cyberbullying. God, is she going to say my video was cyberbullying? Now I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think so, though. I think I was really nice to her. Yeah. Oh, damn. Tyra Banks yelling, we were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you, bro. Yeah, this isn't a good look. This isn't a good look. I, if somebody censored this clip, somebody clip me. I think she should take this back and make an apology publicly and say like, okay, it's not cyberbullying, but I felt attacked and your comments were pretty bad. And then she should block and she get her mods to block everybody in that comment section that was fucking up. Um, yeah, not great. Yeah, not great. Yeah, this is where you need loved ones to tell you like you can't, this isn't cyberbullying. That's not what that is. How old, did you guys say she was like 27? How old is she? Oh, I really liked her. I can't support this though. Sure to not watch it before doing that, by the way. Hopefully with enough reports from different people, it'll get taken care of sooner. And please do not send hate to him. It will only make things worse. I just want this to be over. I love that last part. Make sure you don't harass him. Just mass flag his channel. Alyssa, I'll take hate comments all day before I take a channel strike. If I don't like comments, I can Obviously. just mute them. By the way, considering her behavior, I think the only reason that she asked her follow- She's 26. Okay, she's 26. Yeah, she's 26. Damn. Where it's not saying hate comments, it's probably because she doesn't want to make things worse. Trolling, you're such a troll. She thinks taking care of her health and weight isn't good, so that's predictable. She didn't say that. That is not what she said. Don't take her out of context because you're being a troll. I will block you. That's not what she said. By making people aware that she's mass flagging me. I hate to break it to you, Alyssa, but when you have a channel that has hundreds of thousands of viewers, people make you aware of everything. Even when someone tries to hide a targeted harassment campaign by posting it on Tumblr instead of Twitter or YouTube, where people would actually be able to criticize the evil thing that you're doing. And then she says, I just want this to be over. Well, by playing dirty and attacking my channel and my livelihood, you did the exact thing that will make this not over. Now I have to respond because if I don't, I could lose my channel and the 80 to 100 hours that I spent on that video. <laughs> if you simply did nothing, Alyssa, you had about four more days before everyone forgot about you. Speaking of YouTube rules, and as someone who regularly reads them, I know that my video doesn't break any of them in the hate speech policy or the harassment and cyberbullying policy. Here's the fun part. Do you know what's actually in violation of YouTube's bullying and harassment rules? This Tumblr post. Maybe that's also why she tried to secretly post it because she knows if she posted it on Twitter or YouTube, people could report her for it. Oh God. Originally, I was just going to talk about Alyssa telling her followers to mass flag my channel, but since Alyssa is hell-bent on spreading as much wrong information about health as she possibly can, I feel obligated to comment on an archived post that I was sent. Remember that Alyssa has no background education or any qualifications in this. Well, here she is yet again trying to gaslight people about how many health problems obesity causes and also conflates obesity with people who are underweight to try to make it seem less bad. First of all, let's remove obesity from the- Oh my God, he's so autistic. Nobody cares. I don't care about this at all. Oh my God. Oh. Oh my God, I don't care. Oh, he's so autistic. This is his autism. I hate them both. Oh, they so deserve each other. I. Where's August? Who told me to watch this video? Guys, this is not good. Both of them are a menace to society. Both of them are a menace to my ideal world. Both of these people are a menace to society. One guy who's a mean autist and one girl who's a weak autist. Two people hyper-focused on their only reality and only their reality is real and no one else's. To such a point where you're maliciously and unintentionally hurting one another. You're doing it maliciously because you're both going after each other. And then it's almost unintentionally because you're both so autistic you don't even know what you're doing. She didn't make a video claiming an authority position. She was just sharing her life. He did not cyberbully you. He was just being pedantic and hyper-focused on him spreading like information in his field. And the both of you completely misunderstood each other. And now this happened. I feel like I'm babysitting. I feel like I'm literally babysitting, bro. Don't false flag people. And don't be a mean autist. I know you can't help it sometimes, but Jesus. Crazy. Crazy. I don't even want to finish this video. It's so silly. So silly. I'm so glad I'm not in these communities, bro. On the table, if we're just talking about severe obesity, more than five and a half times more people suffer from that than people suffer from being underweight. This long rant of Alyssa's is so full of wrong information and poor analysis that I could easily spend a whole video on don't it. Care, don't I'm not care. going to go over every point, but I will do a little speed run through each section by also mentioning that Alyssa points out that you can't determine if people are dying of heart disease because of obesity because there are other factors. Oh my God, who fucking cares? Jesus. Reasons that people have gastrointestinal issues. Anyway, Alyssa will go to pretty much any length to prove that none of her mom's health issues are caused by her bad diet. And well, as a fitness professional, Morgan Spurlock should have just. 
platform me and take away my source of income. Like I said, she doesn't care about harassment. And to further prove that, she was very quick to mention all of her YouTube friends a few months ago in a video about autism. My boyfriend Kermit is not of a YouTube sphere, although he does enjoy watching and keeping up with certain creators. But never in a million years did he anticipate being in the same room as Hassan, Jax Films, Ian from Smosh, Eddie Burback, Michael Reeves, Lily Pichu, and many others all at once. Now I will say that I think most of Alyssa's videos are fine. I think she gives decent advice on how to deal with an autistic partner. I think it's great that she's trying to destigmatize mental health treatment with videos like this. And I thought that most of the videos that I watched of hers were entertaining and relatable. I mostly just had a problem with her video on fat acceptance. That being said, we can see that she promotes Noah Samson and Hassan, and at least her boyfriend is a fan of them. The fact that she associates with Hassan yet flips out over light criticism from me is really funny because you know how I'll take time to say good things about a person, argue their points fairly by bringing out their good arguments, and make sure to not poke fun at the things that they can't change? Well, Hassan does none of that. He spent hours reacting to my videos over the past two years, basically calling me every name in the book. Dude, shut the fuck up, you stupid cringe weirdo nerd, dude. How are you like a 14 year old pasty little incel on the internet and I make fun of like pasty little shit skin? Don't make me go after Hassan too, self righteous little. B but Hassan's my cousin, so I get it. I get it. <sighs> Middle Eastern people. <laughs> <laughs> Incels, you are just a pussy, dude. Hassan is well known for the type of behavior that you would consider harassment, so don't try feigning ignorance, especially if your boyfriend is a fan. You have to have seen him do this stuff. Wait, take a look at this moment that I found while I was making the insult compilation. And plus, they make so much assumptions about one another. You must have seen this if if your boyfriend's in front of Hassan or a fan of Hassan. Like they're so everybody assumes so much. Shit on women, just not on the virtue of them being a fucking. And how dare you? Hassan is a fat boy. You leave this man alone. He's got an eating disorder and everything, from what I understand. You leave Hassan alone. Woman, like, I do it all the time. Only okay. I can bully Hassan. Okay. Again, it's just like the Ludwig clip. It's not about gender harassment or making fun of intrinsic traits that someone has. It's about using the term hate speech to move the goalposts every couple of years on what's considered mean so that eventually any kind of criticism will not be allowed because it offends someone. Hassan said it was fine to make fun of a woman just as long as it's not on the virtue of them being a woman. Then he said he does it all the time. Now, can Alyssa point to one example where I made fun of her for being a woman or any intrinsic characteristic that she can't change? Well, no, because she didn't watch the video, so she has no idea what's in it. But anyone who actually did watch it would know that I only commented on things that she has control over, like research skills and fashion. Yet she still said I was bullying her and told people in her massive 2.5 million person following to try and get me deplatformed for a behavior that someone she looks up to or is friends with admits he does all the time. So the claim that this is just about gendered insults or whatever and everything else is fine is completely wrong. Now, Noah isn't as bad as Hassan, but he still says things that Alyssa would very much consider harassment if it was said about her. Oh my God, this is so autistic. Um, um, the person you like though is also a bully. Guys, just grow up. Oh my God, all these people are children, bro. Here's something he said about me. Ow, ow. So that's what this video is, is like. Random stock image, smug, whiny commentary. He also followed that up with an entire video making fun of my voice with a friend of his. Do I care about that? No, I know what I sound like. But don't kid yourself by thinking that Alyssa wouldn't make a big deal of it if someone did something like that to her. So Alyssa, why do you think it's okay to associate and actively promote these YouTubers when they constantly do things? This is so autistic. Um, your friends, though, are also mean, so... It's like, girl, grow up. They're all babies. Oh, I just, I'm so old. I'm so old. I can't do any of this. No, they're so old, bro. Things that you think are so wrong that it's worth trying to deplatform someone. Again, is this the first time another YouTube... Oh! Discord says, did Alyssa take down the post with her call to action? I can't find it. Oh, did she take it down? YouTuber has reacted to her channel because I would never think to get someone deplatformed because I didn't like a reaction they had to a video of mine. Did I cry to YouTube when Hassan made his videos on me? No. Did I cry to YouTube when Noah did? No. Did I whine about Nick is not green or Ethan is online reacting to me? Nope. How about Vosh? Well, Vosh's reactions aged hilariously after he accidentally exposed what was on his computer, but that's beside the point. Never have I tried to deplatform. I can't get into Tumblr. It's it's age restricting me. Am I on the wrong Tumblr? Hold on. Is this... Imagine telling your fans to harass someone and ruin their livelihood because you can't handle criticism. Okay, so I'm seeing a bunch of posts, but where's... Her, does she take down her t Tumblr? Who uses Tumblr anymore, guys? I can't believe you're making me be on Tumblr right now. Somebody did, can we find her original post? Did she take it down? Does she even have a Tumblr? Somebody send me a link to her direct Tumblr, please. He platform someone over negative commentary, and these people have all said way worse stuff to me than any of the stuff that I said about Illumation. A lot of reactions to my channel have been straight up slander, too. I mean, Alyssa, you do understand that this post here calling me a right wing extremist who led a targeted harassment campaign against you is technically liable, right? On top of that, I would like to note that I've made many videos criticizing other people, and Alyssa is the only person to ever try to deplatform me because she can't handle any criticism. How are all these other people so brave? Aren't you like 26? You are well into adulthood and a lot closer to 30 than you are to 20, yet you behave like an elementary school child tattletaling to the teacher because some other kid criticized you for being a bad sport during kickball. Considering that in this post you stated that your market is children, do you really think this is being a good role model? Telling people to stick their head in the sand? Not listen to feedback and use dirty tactics against anyone who criticizes them by trying to deplatform a smaller creator all you've done is make yourself look bad and legitimize the claims that your opponent made against you so here's a little what did he say did he just say attacking a small creator his children do you really think this is being a good role model telling people to stick their head in the sand not listen to feedback and use dirty tactics against anyone who criticizes them by trying to deplatform a smaller creator all you've done um shut the fuck up oh these people are such pussies bro he's like oh smaller creator you have eight hundred thousand subscribers she has a million point two right Hold on. There's no fucking way you are crying. You are crying. Oops, I spelled that wrong. Whoop.
That is definitely not what I meant to go Google. She Oh, she has 2.5. So? So? Don't be a pussy, bro. I can't believe how pussy these people are, bro. They actually go after bigger YouTubers to bring in clout. And then the YouTuber like stands up for themselves whether we like it or not. We don't like the way she did it. But he's like, oh, I'm a smaller YouTube creator. Oh, you're such a baby, bro. Are you an adult or not? Are you a fucking adult or not, bro? You're such a baby, bro. It's not like you have fucking, even if you have 30 subscribe, 30,000 subscribers, don't punch up, bro. Okay. Either you're equals or you're not. You're such a baby, bro. But also, okay, hold on. I just signed up for a Tumblr. Oh, great. Okay, guys, can just someone please find me? Find me this thing. She shouldn't have false flagged him. That's fucked up. It's not cyberbullying. But he's such a baby, bro. Done is make yourself look bad and legitimize the claims that your opponent made against you. So here's a little advice from someone who is not qualified like Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro. If you want this to go away, then stop trying to get my video and my channel taken down. And most importantly, ignore everything. Instead of burning your energy on a bunch of random people on the internet That's that you true. don't know that have no effect on your personal life, enjoy your vacation in Japan. As someone who has been studying Japanese for years, you would never see me ruin a trip to Japan over some stupid creator drama. Why are you even on your phone? You should be out doing stuff. It's been over a decade since I've been there, and no stupid woke leftist reaction video is going to ruin that vacation. In fact, Noah Samson made this video on me right before I went on vacation for a week last summer, and I paid no attention to it until God, he's so autistic. Um, actually, the way I would handle it is the way you should handle it because we're literally the same person. You're not the same person, bro. She should DM me. Somebody, somebody tell Alyssa to slide into my DMs so I can explain to her what cyberbullying is and I can make this go away for her. What? A, she did a call to action. It's not okay. Yeah, I want to know. I want to see the call to action on her Tumblr. I want to see it because I can't find it and I want to see it. So I got back. You would do well to try that. And contrary to what you said in this video here, ignoring people does make things go away. Does anyone remember that Mr. Free Speech Tim Pool sided with two people named Eliza Blue and Jack Murphy who were both in favor of deplatforming? Nope. Do people remember that Tim Pool had one of his reporters write multiple hit pieces on Eliza's top critics while Eliza was busy using her connections to get those critics banned on Twitter and their videos removed from YouTube? I don't think so. Well, I mean, I remember that, but pretty much nobody remembers it because Tim Pool kept his mouth shut. Was it moral for him to do that? No, but it worked, and things went back to normal a few weeks after the drama was over. Alyssa, if you don't like negative comments, all you had to do was mute them for a couple days, probably not even a week, and everyone would have forgotten about it. So if you really want this to just be over, that would be my advice. And Google the Streisand effect. Anyway, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you. Hold on. I'm a little confused in it. Okay, hold on. Let's find what we want to find, okay? Because I'm confused. Yeah, okay. Well, in this case, I do think he has the right to defend himself. I think he's a baby. I think they're all babies, though. Okay, we found it. Let me see. Oh, I have to be signed in? Somebody screenshot this for me. No, it's not the same thing. Never mind. Okay. Wrong post. Okay, don't send me porn. I'm not going to pull it up on my stream yet. Did you say he's Venti's boyfriend? He might be trolling. No. You think this is a troll because he's Venti's boyfriend? Hold on. It says I have to be logged in. Bro, I don't have time to be logged in, bro. Oh, hold on. Okay. <sighs> okay, all her Twitch follow, all her Twitter followers, for the most part, all look like adults for sure. I'm not sure though. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out what's her demographic. So again, I don't know why a 26 year old would false flag this for cyberbullying, but I don't think it was a false flag in her head. She probably thinks it's cyberbullying, but I really hope YouTube knows that's not what that was. I mean, I doubt he'll be in trouble. I think it's obvious it's not cyberbullying, but I, I don't know if she knows that. And the question is, why doesn't she know that's not cyberbullying? Or maybe in her bubble, it is cyberbullying. Does anyone here think it's cyberbullying? Because that would give me an insight into why she might think it is. Because people make videos about each other all the time. I mean, there are people on the, the internet making such salacious videos about me. It's like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? It's just like, they have no receipts. They have nothing. You know what I mean? So it's just like them giving an opinion. Ultimately, this is all just an opinion thing. Like, he's not more right than she's not more right. It's just opinions, 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 opinions. So does anyone in my audience watching now, does anyone think what he did was cyberbullying? Because it would give me an answer. And it would give me an understanding of what's going on. Because, yeah, this is so, yeah, I don't know why she did this. What a weird decision. This was two weeks ago. Cyberbullying is just bullying online, but online. Yeah, but like he didn't bully her. 
He just like made a dumb video about her. Like I don't even like his video. I think he totally missed the mark and misunderstood her completely. Right? I think he completely misunderstood her, but he didn't cyber bully her either. I mean, she didn't even watch the video, so who knows? Oh, I do think that's really fucked up. Discord said, I think in her bubble it would be cyberbullying. Obviously, in Destiny's bubble, it wouldn't be. Yeah, but Destiny's like a pretty extreme case because his audience does bully people and there's such a cesspool of people. Not everybody. We have a lot of nice people in my community from Destiny's. But there's a large part of DGG that's so toxic and useless. Like, that's why they all get blocked. But they are the mean autists as well. So I feel like their communities have more overlap than hers. But in her community, I'm kind of surprised she false flagged him. But also, I don't know if that's normal in that community. I couldn't. But maybe she thinks it's cyberbullying, I guess. I mean, it could be in her brain cyberbullying. I don't think it's a fake flag. Like, I don't think she's doing it and she knows it's wrong. I think she thinks it's right. Alice says, I think she's punishing him for his audience. Well, she should have watched the video if she was going to flag it. That's kind of the problem is like she should have watched the video if she was going to flag it. I think that's the unethical part is not even watching the video. Then she did false flag him, right? Egon says, do you think they both have values as content creators if you compartmentalize their strong points and ignore their bad uh, parts like a dumb, like the dumb drama? Do you think they both have value as content creators? Oh, do you think they both have value? Um, yeah, for sure. Like for different audiences, I definitely could see the value they both bring to their audiences. And I think that shows in their numbers. I do. I think it shows in their numbers that they actually have a community and all that stuff, right? So... Discord says that the guy sounded like he would be exactly the type of mean autist from Destiny's community. Oh, for sure. For sure. But at the same time, like, yeah, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine flagging someone for cyberbullying me. I don't even flag my stalker, bro. I don't give a fuck. Like, I already went to court. It's settled. I don't talk about her ever again, and I'm good. But, like, I don't go to her videos and flag them. I don't care. If somebody wants to do that for me, great. But, like, I don't care. Like, they're bad videos. They're definitely, like, wrong. But stalker's going to stalk. Mentally ill people going to mentally ill. You know, crazy going to crazy. So it's kind of like insane. Or even other YouTubers who accuse me of like doing the most outrageous things. Obviously, I didn't do. And the video they show of me doing the alleged thing is proving I didn't do the alleged thing. Like, what am I going to do? Go flag those videos? I couldn't even imagine doing that as a content creator. Yeah, like I, I can't imagine why she would do that. You know? Maybe she just got overwhelmed with all the hate his comments were bringing because I'm sure they were awful. Here, wait, let's go to her video. Let's see if any of the mean comments are left on her video because I'm sure they are. And I'm sure they're mean. Like, I'm sure they're mean. You know what I mean? Hold on. Let's see. Where is it? Hi. Okay, so here's her video. Um... Okay, let's go to the newest. Well, 15,000 comments. I must be lacking a film on this, but from what I know, Illy is in the right. Oh, that's not. Why are you still breathing? Okay, see, that's a mean comment. Why are you still breathing? See, that's not a good comment. I would ban that person. I bullied them back. I'm not sure what that is. This is a dumb video. I might block that comment. So people who write like, oh, that's a dumb video. You don't want those people in your community. I don't want people in my community that spend any time of their oxygen in their short life going on other people's videos and saying trash, pee pee poo poo. Like I'd block all these people. You know what I mean? Um, she wishes the number of people who found this video funny was the same number of her calorie count. See, I'd block these people. What do you need them in your community? They're obviously being stupid. Stop yapping, little bro. Like, you know. Um... Let me see. You deserve nothing. Yeah, I'd block all these people. You know what I mean? Um, scum. I'd block that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can read certain comments and know they're just like, you don't want those people in your community. No grown adult, no good person is going on these comments, like doing, like making these kinds of comments. You know what I mean? And if you're making these kind of comments on your people's videos, you need to fucking stop. Okay, you need to fucking stop. It's it's very silly. You know what I mean? Um, uh, Egon says, I might subscribe to both, but if they piss me off, I won't watch them. Hey, that's what you got to do, right? Silly Willie says, okay, those people are bullies. Yeah, like this is just silly. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like you should block all these things. 
yeah, you should block all these people. They don't get you. They don't see you. They don't know why they're here. His video wasn't cyberbullying, but this stuff is trash. And also he does promote that. The way he talks about people promotes that idea. I hope you guys do not watch my videos and bother people. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Don't do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why she would do that, but she probably just needs some therapy and stuff. And also, he's a horribly mean person. I did think the original content creator was horribly mean. Like, I don't like him. I don't think, like, he made any good point. I don't think he saw her. I don't think anything in his video was helpful to her or her community. But I'm sure it was helpful to him and his community. So that's something, you know? And I think we need to realize that as content creators, sometimes when we make content, it's not really for the people we're making content about. It's really for us and our communities. And I don't think content creators are willing to admit that. I think he did think he was, like, really helping her. That's why he went on that autistic rant forever about the details look guys he literally made this video about her false flagging him and then went on for like 20 fucking minutes about all the points of how he was right medically and she wasn't habibi nobody cares habibi it wasn't even about that so that tells me like he doesn't even understand why she's mad in the first place you know it's just silly it's just silly all of it's silly okay am I, is that it is that what you guys wanted me to catch up on thank you for suggesting the video it's interesting so overall i stand by what i said he misunderstood her to begin with. She was upset. His audience bullied her. She retaliated by saying to flag the video. That was wrong. Don't flag the video because of the audience. That's not fair to the content creator. Um, and also, he continued to misunderstand her even after the flagging. I don't know. They just seem silly. I don't think they understand each other. I don't think they see each other. Um, I don't think there's much else to say. I hope she takes back that false flag. I hope um, his audience is never allowed to comment on her videos again. And I don't think she should ever watch any of his videos because they're not helpful to her. Don't watch things that aren't helpful to you. But also you can't flag videos you didn't watch. And also you can't flag videos that aren't cyberbullying. Yeah. Freya says, Brittany, commentary here is 10 out of 10 meta understanding. Let's go. Humans are going to human. And this is the epitome of humans gonna human, right? Buy my merch, links in the description. Get your hoodie today. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.